focus on the pain, the only thing that's real. Monday, September 5th, 118 in the PM. Helen from the Pacific Northwest. I got a question for you. The question of the day is, how do you know if your build is any good? How do you quantify that? And how can we make it measurable? How are, how are these things measurable, right? The effectiveness of your build. How is that measurable? With so many variables in the game, you're playing a team, you're playing on heroic, you're playing on challenging, you're playing on legendary, your team sucks, your team is awesome. <laughs> you're doing it solo, you're doing it duo. You know what I mean? Like the, the missions are different. One's maybe harder than the other. This one's got more grenadiers. This one's got more warhounds. How do you truly measure your build's effectiveness? Is there really a meta? Is there a single meta build that is good for all content? Can that be true? Let's find out together. Let's go. What's going on, my banditos? So, uh, so there's a sick gym, right? So, sick gym is an amazing supporter. He's always first, right? He's always first on the YouTube side of things. And let me tell you, this guy is so fast that he beats me, right? Because I always pin a message. So as soon as I start the stream, kind of set it up, I always pin a message. And he sometimes beats me to pinning that message. My message is a copy and paste. So, I'm not typing shit out. <laughs> this guy is fast. I'm telling you, and today I was pretty proud of myself because he's been beating me over the last couple of days. And so, yeah, yeah, Pico, I am in this competition too, this first to stream, first to chat competition because Sick Jim is so fast, he beats me. And I don't even know how he does it. I, got, I said to him the other day, I was like, man, if everybody had your notification settings, I would be the luckiest YouTuber, Twitch streamer, Division Two guy in the planet. <laughs> because he's so fat like this it's, it's it's a notification thing right like you know you get pop-ups on your phone or whatever right and so whatever his settings are are badass they're on steroids his phone is on the white pony the, his phone rides the white pony for sure so the question of the day how do you measure a build's value the effectiveness of the effectiveness of the build and xander is kind of laid it out there for us. I mean, the answer is, it's a, there, it is no, there is no straight answer. That's what Xander says, 600, right on Xander. It's a tricky question, isn't it? But people are answering it every day. Every day, for years, for years, this question has been answered. So why why is it tricky? Why is there, if, if it is, if the experienced players, the guys that have been your masters, your senseis in this game, have been answering that question since day one, right? And they're saying like, hey, we got that answer. It's 
and and let me show you i'll show i'll get let me give you the answer people there it is there it is that's it people easy to make <laughs> right so this build is not a challenge to make it is not a hard build it is called the meta by many you know and you might make one or two tweaks depending on uh the content you're playing but that's the idea of this build you can take it into what guys you can take it into raids you can take it into legendary can you you, you could do heroic you could go solo you go group it's perfect apparently <laughs> is that true is that true right and we're gonna figure a little bit of that that we're gonna evaluate that today it is a tricky question it is a tricky question is it and part of it when we we're talking about um yesterday is there's so many factors what's going on larry cummings and so part of it there's so many factors right like uh we're reaper hawk in the house <laughs> is that a lot of it is your skill it is and i know that sounds stupid and simple and and like like basically it's, it almost sounds like a cop-out right it sounds like a cop-out it does but there's more there's more to that conversation when i say it's it's about your skill because it's also about your team skill play right and we were talking about this in last night's stream as well so your team skill dictates the the validity of a build okay so i'm a youtuber and i create builds for you guys on the daily right you get that right and so i can make my build look like a god or i can make my build look like shit depending on who i am playing with all right and it goes a couple of, and it could, and that, and it could go either way, depending on who you're playing with. So let me to give you an example. Okay, so I, you know, my watch is seven thousand eight hundred. Let's just use that as a simple measurement. It doesn't mean anything. Your watch doesn't mean anything, right? But like, you know, I've been, my point is, I've been playing this game steady since basically the beginning, and I have taken breaks for you know, uh, several month breaks, you know, early on in the game, uh, before Warlords in New York. But since Warlords in New York came out, I basically have never left this game. All right, and so that's where my watch is. So uh, I've done the Dark Hours raids plenty of times. Uh, I created our original uh, Iron Horse. I was part of the team that created, I should say, our original Iron Horse raid strategy back in the day. That's when Iron Horse launched. So I was there for Iron Horse day one where we were spending eight hours on trying to, a day trying to figure out that raid until we completed it. And then we, and then we um, uh, how do you say, you know, made things more efficient, right? So then we, we iterated until we got more efficient as a team and made things faster, whatever, whatever. So I was part of that. So, I mean, so I'm experiencing all facets of this game, basically, except for hardcore. I've never done hardcore here, mostly because I'm, I haven't, uh, this, I haven't the ability to sacrifice a character to that, but, uh, because I need all my stash space, but that's the only thing in this game that I haven't played, right? So my point is I'm experienced, right? I mean, the most experienced in this game, probably not. I mean, there, there, may, there are people that put more hours than I do into this game, right? But I, I just say I'm your, I'm your average, well-rounded player in this game. You know, so, and then I create builds on probably above at the above average rate. Like I literally go like three or four builds a day sometimes, right? You guys see them, I do them live for you in these streams, right? We'll create a builds, we'll flesh it out, we'll play it for a little bit. All right, on to the next one, woo, <laughs> right? So wham, and so, okay, my point is, is that, so as a YouTuber, okay, if I wanna make this build shine, then, I can go hook up with three below average players when I mean or newer players or, you know, people that are aren't as good as me. Right. And I can go run legendary and come out with the top kills and come out with the top damage, whatever build I run this build or a different build. Now, with that same team, I could also make this this build look like shit. Because when they go die, I have to go pick them up. When I go try to pick them up, I get hit by a drone. When I get hit by that drone, I die. Then somebody else comes and pick me up, and then they die. And then we have to restart. So I can the same team that will make this build shine will also can make this build look like shit. And that's up to me. Because I decided to go pick them up. But I, you guys know that I can clear legendary solo, right? So I can just leave my guy dead over there and finish out the, the, the checkpoint and then go pick him up afterwards, right? But if I choose to go pick him up because I don't like to have a man down when I play, so that's, you know, that's my problem, right? Then I get hit by that drone or that grenade or that tank flakes me and then now we're all dead, right? So the point is, is that it's, it's down. My point is, is that if I'm playing with a team that isn't as experienced as me, then 
I'm my damage and my kills are gonna look great at the end of that legendary summary and I'm gonna show you look you see you know you see it's the best build look I slaughtered my team in, co in competitive gameplay right and you got and a lot of people say oh you're playing solo you're playing solo build suck in solo the true evaluation of a build is in group gameplay right and what I'm trying to tell you is it's not so I took all of my team's buffs, right? And then I used it basically against them. I know, think about that. So my team is like, oh, they're running fire raw. I got more damage to target out of cover. They're running, uh, somebody's running Eclipse. I got more damage to status affected targets. Somebody's running whatever. And then we're all focus firing. So it makes my DPS look great, right? And my DPS is already great on this build, but we got four guys shooting at a single target and then let's like, yeah, you see my build? Look how fast it shredded that mofo. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then even if we're not focus firing, I'm still gonna shred that mofo better than I did solo because I got team buffs, right? It's the same NPCs. There's the same, you're, every time you, count, you go into legendary, it's the same NPCs, the same number of chungas, the same number of non-elites, the same number of elites. It's always the same enemies in legendary, right? That's, that's a fixed thing. For example, in District Union Arena, there's basically only one variable in the whole game. And you guys may not even know that, but it's in that uh, it's about halfway, right? When you go like past the little little food kitchen thing in the middle. Um, and so, anyways, it's about halfway. Sometimes there's one chunga that comes out. Sometimes there's two chungas that come out of that room. Everything else is locked in in the game. And I don't know why that's different. I don't. I don't know why that's different because it has nothing to do with how many players you are but okay now let's take the same conversation what we just talked about by using your team right the team the team is so the competitiveness of the team is is a factor on on how good your build is right and so uh, or how you can demonstrate it or present it or whatever and so if i'm playing with a team that's equal to me or better than me but let's just say equal right so if we're all just really good players right if we're all just really good players on my team my build uh can also shine right because same thing we're shredding enemies faster and i'm like yeah look how fast i shredded that enemy because i got three other guys who are really good at landing their shots and focusing on the head and weak points shooting at the same target as me because we all know who our target priorities are i don't have to go pick them up as much so that means i'm getting more kills right I'm staying alive. They're supporting me, you know, but also on the other side is it puts the build into a little bit more perspective because now I'm competing for kills with guys that are just as good as me. You see? So at the end, at the end, it'd be like, you know, uh, if, if we're playing with four guys, maybe I got like 65 kills, right? Uh, is that a good number or not? Well, there's about 215 enemies in the legendary, right? So that would mean that, you know, I went above above an evil an even split. So if everybody did their job, they're killing about 54 enemies, give or take, right? And so if I got 65, that means I I killed more than they did. But it was look, what's the gap? We're talking about nine enemies. So maybe that was just one control point, or one. I'm sorry, I always say control point, but one checkpoint that went in my favor because maybe they all got hit with the wrong fucking grenade. And I was the only one that didn't, right? And so my point is, is like, how can we, how is that a fair evaluation of a build? How can that be it? How can it be down to that, right? To group play and legendary, because I think, or, or group pay, play and raids. How can it be down to raids, <laughs> right? Like there's seven other guys and you got one job and it's just like, and you know, it's a very the builds are too specific in raids. I don't even think we can use raids, right? So it's basically four man team and legendary is I, what it comes down to in evaluating your build. And there's so my point is, is there's so many variables. You know, what are you going to do? <clears throat> How can I be fair? So anyways, you know, um, there's some minor options you can run on this too. Like you can run a Cheska down here, a second piece of Providence, and you can even run Foxes if you want to do that. I just didn't have a Foxes down here, so can't show you that. But we're going to do some build evaluation, all right? 
And so how do you measure the effectiveness? I mean, so one of the things is like, you know, it, it's the, the, the effectiveness of a build. I mean, the word the best build in the game is really subjective, right? And it's overused a lot in this game. I can say that, right? So we got a lot of people, you know, come up with their builds and they say this is the best build in the game. Best build for what? Best build for you. Best build for legendary. Best build all around. Best build. Best assault rifle build. Best solo build. Best. <laughs> you know what I mean? Best for what? Best what? Best right. Be a little bit more specific. It's probably helpful for all of us, don't you think? Be a little bit more specific. But um, so. This is a, a really good DPS build, right? And so, as you can see, I got fast hands here. A lot of people uh, don't realize that fast hands are really nice for DPS, but it is. And, uh, you know, if you don't prefer to do that, you can go measured, but your DPS is a little bit uh, less. You can even go strained. Um, and now I choose to run the Coyote's Mask, and I play, as you can see, into the fluctuation. So I know on average my enemies are going to play um, in that 15-meter mark. And so I play into that. And so um, I'm going to get a 10% crit chance buff from that mask. I'm also going to get a 10% crit damage buff at that range. When they pull in, I get a 25% crit damage buff. When they pull out, if I'm shooting enemies beyond then 25 meters, then I am missing out on a lot from the mask because that mask is giving me 25% crit hit chance. So it is in my favor to play inside 25 meters with this build. If not then I should be whipping over to a longer range weapon, right? One of these bad guys. But I got the Nemesis on here just for fun, but it's not really part of this. Otherwise, this is, you know, the, your standard build. So we got the crits everywhere, vigilance in the backpack, the contractor's gloves, of course, for the damage to armors, foxes for the damage to targets out of cover, and perfect glass cannon. So this is going to be a big part of our discussion. Perfect glass cannon. Is it productive or counterproductive? How do we measure that, right? And, and and we're going to be one of the parts of this question is a big discussion discussion, right? And my expertise level is 11. Uh, Rao, Ro. So um, and so but part of what we're going to be looking at is survivability. So like people preach like if this bill, the, the problem with this build, I think that we could probably all agree upon is that is that um, you can't take any real damage, right? You just can't. And it has nothing to do with glass cannon. And it's not the glass cannon part. It's the everything else part. The glass cannon saves your life more than not, right? When I'm running an all red build, even with obliterate, and I get hit with a bullet, I say to myself, fuck, I might as well be wearing glass cannon. Because I feel glassy. I already feel glassy without glass cannon. And we're going to show you that in a little bit because we're going to run some other builds. All right. So we're going to do a little, a little t a comparison. And I'm going to show you how I'm, I'm going to evaluate it. Here's a, the cheat code. We're, we're comparing these really against the cheat code. Okay. And, that, and the cheat code is this crazy off meta build I've been running in the last couple of days. It's highly effective though. Right. And we'll talk about like how I evaluate effective. Right. But what I can tell you up front is I, I am a firm believer that there's not a single build that is the meta for all content. Not even this one. Right? And there's a good portion of the community that agrees that this build is the meta. Give or take the holster. <laughs> okay? But it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Let's do some quick numbers if you're down. So let me... Um, Actually, make this invulnerable. Now, granted, um, I'm going to be playing inside. Actually, let me go ahead and do five meters. So we're, we're playing at full crit damage values. Okay, so we're playing into the um, the coyotes masks inside 15. So that's going to give us a little less crit chance, but a little more crit damage. Okay, and so um, and then we are just going to wail on it. All right. And so I'm not really concerned about the high DPS value, but we'll get that also. But what I'm really looking for, I'm sorry, the high crit value. Not super concerned about that. What I'm really concerned about is the DPS. So we got single mag DPS, but when we're using fast hands, it's about uh, cutting out the reload. So multi mag uh, DPS. And so, but let's, let's just get that high crit value. 778, 831. Right. So it looks like 831. 931 for some reason it jumped <laughs> I don't know I can tell you why 931 looks like it's gonna be the high we don't got anything stacking right 
We got glass game. So that's the funny part. It's just random. It's like what it considers a solid headshot, I guess. Oh, it's the art did uh, when we break his armor, I guess, apparently. But anyway, 931 high crit value. There it is. Okay. Body. 719. Now you can get stronger, you can get higher, but I choose the FAMAS because I'm choosing the FAMAS because it's just a really common one that a lot of people use. Um, there's no other reason, but it's it's this burst value that gives it to you. So, and that's gonna help us with the DPS. Okay, so let's reset this and let's look at multi mag DPS. Okay, let's pull over five mags real quick. Do this real fast. One, two, three. Or six point two, six point two over five mags. All right, so six point two over five mags. So now the other build, um, let me see, make sure I got this saved real quick. Call it boo. Yeah, it's saved. Okay, cool. So 6.2 over 5 mags. That there be the meta. <laughs> okay. So now let's put on the striker. Let's assemble ourselves a little striker build. Uh, that'll work. And we're going to test these also. So out in the field, right? Because we talk about. So we're just getting some quick values here. Uh, I should write that one down, by the way. 6.2. Because I always forget my numbers. Okay. So 6.2 mil DPS. All right. Now, a quick little strikers test. And I'm going to run. I'll go ahead and run the strikers test. Why not? Uh, we're going to Chris right 49. Uh, I don't want to run that though. I do want to run the strikers mask and then I'm going to put on what do we got here? Da -da -da. We're going to put damage to armor. Because that's the one thing we're missing on the build. Uh, and that puts me at 49 108. All right. I'll, and I need to put on some more crit chance. That means 55. I'll take it more crit damage. Cool. So 55, 120. So not everything else is going to keep the same, all right? So four-piece striker. We're running the striker's chest piece. Now, you don't... The strongest striker build is actually without a chest piece, but we're just going to keep it simple. All right. Uh, and so highest crit value. So the last one was like 931, but this one we're going to have to get some stacks, right? So let's get some stacks up. All right, so looks like 821. 821 without glass cannon. And what do you got? You got uh, faster uh, everything, right? Because you got the 50% uh, weapon handling and also the re uh, RPMs. So let's do a DPS check. So let's go ahead and do a DPS check at full. Stacks first one, two, three, four, five, seven point five. What do you think about that? So the meta build, so let's just do a compar comparison. So this build, or this so-called meta build, uh, pulls 6.2 million DPS at full potential. When I mean full potential, I mean the coyote mask, close range, the vigilance, 
not deactivated and glass cannon uh right for a perfect glass cannon so you're not taking damage because if you take damage your dps it comes to a halt with this build you get that right and that's what i mean by effectiveness right and so that's the effectiveness what's your dps going to be when you take basically two bullets on this build it's going to come to a halt because you're gonna what ends up happening is like so you're down there if you if you're about if you're trying to rack up your, your shooting and trying to get great dps out in the field you take a shot you got to stop shooting your dps has stopped and all that time you're cowering all the time you're healing yourself has to be a factor in your dps right and so so this is what's going to happen so you see i'm just going to give an example but this is like it's such a variable it's not going to be real right so like so you're out there shooting right and then you're working on your dps and then it comes to a halt and then this has to this time to do this that and then reload that's got to be part of your dps and that's gonna fucking hurt your dps right that's gonna hurt your dps so when they come in here and when people use the lab to prove out their bills and say it's the best dps in the game it's an unfair evaluation because if you're running perfect glass cannon it's like the instant nobody just lets you run around and get shot everywhere right okay it's uh, i mean nobody runs around and does, doesn't let you get shot you know what i'm saying they're like if you're getting you're taking damage constantly in this game aren't you and so yeah you, the dps might save you but you're still stopping to heal aren't you still stopping to heal you have to why because the only thing i got is 10 percent armor on kill and a weak little drone so i have to stop to heal right and so this build this boo one so does it really does it really have the best dps does it really and the answer is no i mean we just showed the striker does okay but let's 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 even out the striker so now let's pretend like so that was the best of striker now let's do start from scratch okay so now we're going to let me just get some rounds we're gonna uh, so we're gonna build up across five rounds five mags okay so we're gonna start from zero the last one we started with striker stack so now we're starting from zero otherwise everything else is the same so let's just go ahead and get that dps I think that's four I think 7.1 sorry I'm writing this down for notes what did that just tell you what did that just tell you that was 7.1 7.1 dps 7.1 million dps starting from bottom this was 6.2 dps and that's using the coyote mask inside 15. wow wow how, how come nobody calls this the meta what's the problem it's got better DPS. Is the factor really a single? Is it the single? Let's try it. Maybe it's a single mag DPS. That's what they're concerned about. Maybe that's why. All right. Is were the game contained in a single mag? I don't get that. All right. Let's try that. 6.8. Already better. So there's a single mag. 6.8 million. So single mag striker is 6.8 million. And the meta, this quote unquote meta is at 6.2. Let's try Let's go back to the, uh, the quote unquote meta. It should, it might be higher under a single mag, but the reality is that we should be playing deeper, but let's just go ahead and try it. Oh, I gotta go out there. Of course. 
and this is this isn't a big deal i'm just i'm proving a point here but the bigger one is that the reality is is that the testing range is fixed it's all fixed in here okay let me reset this so let's see if we can get over 6.8 with this one and it's again an unfair advantage because we're playing at five meters let's go 8.2 is that right 8.2 But the reality is, is that I got to even this out. So let's make it fair now. Let's make it fair. So I got to get my crits to max. Um, actually, let, let me put that back. We'll just play at 15. The problem is, is that The build is set to the average. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It all has to do with the coyote mass. So now we're at 15. All right. So DPS at 15. Let's see if we can get over 6.2. If we can maintain over 7.1. Four point something. Okay. So let's just say I have a horrible aim. So we're going to give the build a couple of extra shots. Five point something. So practice makes perfect. Five point something. So yeah, it's it's an unfair advantage this build has. And so in order, to, you know, it's a little hard to do the comparison. You see why it's all about that coyote's mass. So if I do this, I'm getting more crit damage than I should, but fine. Let's just do this one. We'll give it the advantage. 8.8. .8. So higher, right? Higher. But the reality is, is that this glass cannon is going to change everything. Nobody in here is shooting back. At, what if all these papers were moving and shooting back at you? Would it still beat Striker? Right? What if you ran out of uh, armor kits? What are you going to do then? Right? And so these are the things. Oh, Sirica, I appreciate the, the gifts. Thanks for that. That's awesome. Awesome, you. Awesome. So let's go find out. So this is what we're going to do today. So here's a challenge. So, so I, I think I laid it out, right? The, the problem. And so it's not the testing. There's nothing wrong with the testing range. Everybody knows this is just kind of to get a gist of things, right? You get that. This is just a gist. And so, but what I'm saying is like, how, the question is, how do you evaluate them? It's not which is right and which is wrong. You don't have to, you don't have to believe this is the meta if you don't want to. You know what I mean? You don't have to believe strikers better if you don't want to. That's not the point of this. The point of this is like, how do you measure the effectiveness? So I'm not arguing the meta, uh, even though I don't consider this a meta myself. But like, the the thing is, is that it's like, how do you really measure the effectiveness? Is it because I can run this in a four man legendary? Can I? Or does it require a healer? How many times am I suppressed? What's my real DPS? What's the real DPS? And you and you can't know i mean maybe pc players have a module they can put on that kind of helps them with their dps but you can't know and so how do you evaluate it what's the effectiveness of a build well there's so many variables what's the purpose of the build what's the purpose of the build and so i that you have to define that it's just like any business proposition any pro it's this is a product right this is a product let's just call this a product right and so um if this is a product, then you got to, we have to find a way we got, first of all, we got a well, quality assurance on this product. Does it do what it says it's going to do? Right. Now, this is what people say it's going to do. So these aren't necessarily my words, but they, uh, but I do believe in this time to kill is the most important factor in this game. That's a, just a, a general statement, right? It's, 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 I didn't make it up. I don't know who did, <laughs> but it's been out there for a long time. Time to kill is the most import, important factor in the game. And so, and so when somebody puts out a build like this, what is your number one argument? But like, yeah, that build is nice, but you can't take shit for damage. Is that true or false? True. That's true. 
you can't i got 731 armor with perfect glass cannon if you don't if you're not familiar with perfect glass cannon that's giving me 60 percent incoming amplified damage am i a fan of perfect glass cannon i am i love glass cannon i am a glass cannon fool i love glass cannon i don't run it a lot because i feel bad for the community because <laughs> i know there's a lot of people that hate it does that mean glass cannon is the best chess piece in the game absolutely not you know what i mean but uh, do i love it for solo legendary and that's mostly why it's mostly solo legendary do i like running it in heroic not really why don't i like running it in heroic what's the difference and here we go this is breaking into that that make where where who was it that said it um xander 600 was saying it's woo tough question really hard to evaluate right and it's so true because perfect glass cannon i can go all of Hero uh, uh, dp uh, sorry district union arena and not take any damage or take very little damage right because of my gameplay strategy for legendary and i've you know sort of just have it mastered for district union arena you know and the other ones you know i don't play as much but you know so I know which cover to use. I use a, a, a paperweight shield, you know, an all, so I was still running. I can run this perfect glass cannon build. And I, do, I put on a shield and get that wider, that wider right hand view. So basically I can put out shots without getting shot. And, and if anybody tries to flank me, I, I'll DPS them down into the ground. I look forward to them coming into my right hand view. <laughs> That's all I got to say. You know what I mean? And we'll demonstrate that. As a matter of fact, let's go demonstrate that. So this is why people say perfect glass cannon is uh and i get this argument as a matter of fact from it's funny it was from i don't know why it comes from raiders mostly but when they see me running or promoting a glass cannon built for legendary i'll get comments that you can't do legendary with glass cannon and i'm like what are you even playing this game how long have you been playing this game this game is absolutely could be played with glass cannon and it could be played with perfect glass cannon and i learned that uh, early on when i was uh teaching myself how to do solo legendaries that you're you're better off with a better time to kill than anything else dead on a dps build that is on a dps build so like when you play it soft like obliterate you know you can still do it with obliterate but i find that it's when push comes to shove when that tank is flanking me when that drone operator is in the open when that grenadier is down sight it's the perfect glass cannon that gives me the edge to delete them before they delete me you know and so yeah we're talking about fractions of a second that win that win that help you win the battle and if you're not taking any damage if you're not taking any damage then what difference does it make if you have extra 60 percent amplified damage coming into you if when you die you're gonna die really hard and there's nobody to pick you up what's the difference from taking 60 percent amplified damage or zero extra amplified damage coming at you you understand and so the point is like legendary solos are hard enough like like if you die you you're dead start over <laughs> you know what i mean like there's no soft dying in this in this it's uh, like you're dead or you're not oops i put on the wrong i gotta put on some ch couple of quick changes wrong skills but let me demonstrate so uh, and so it's a gameplay strategy how and what and who you're playing dictates what whether a build can be used and so the problem is is that if i did this in solo uh heroic i can't do this success as successful because of the variables in solo heroic right and what i'm talking about is like the enemies might be coming in from behind me they may be coming in from in front of me uh, I don't know what enemies I'm going to get. Maybe I get 10 tanks. Maybe I get one tank. Maybe I get zero tanks. You see that tank trying to flank me? Now I didn't only stop the tank. I fucking deleted it. You get it? So you got to be able to land your shots. You got to have the DPS. You got to have the power. You got to know where your cover is. There's more truth in the build. Is any of that the build? Is any of that the build? Here I am about to die. But is, is any of that the build? You know what I mean? It's not. It's the player. It's the player's skill. It's the, right. I had to know which cover to hide behind, right? Is it that garbage can? Was it the tires? Should I should I play deeper back behind that truck, right? 
no and so that's experience that's experience and that's uh, par partially skill level like if you play too deep for an assault rifle then you're gonna get um more misses right and you're gonna get more what do you call it uh you're gonna lose some optimal range right and also you you might take you might get outflanked you might get more grenades to the face you might get who knows That doesn't mean you're gonna win every fight. But you can make it easier for yourself. And so you'll see here th that when it comes to losing, the losing, like when I do die or whatever, it won't have anything to do with the glass cannon part. The glass cannon part will help me win. Like this tank, this tank's not even gonna have a chance. So up front, your greater deers and your takes are your biggest challenges, right? See that? So I took a little bit of damage, but not enough to matter, right? See that uh, grenadier in the open? It's fast hands and the perfect glass cannon that allowed me to get him. Got a little potato aim happening here and there. So my, my strategy, my build and my strategy is a little bit tailored to the content right so like for example like I'm, i know i'm gonna play legendary and if i'm good if i decide to go dps that's fine it doesn't matter i can do this with negotiators i can do this with striker none of that none of that's gonna necessarily change this but if i go with the skill build i'm gonna change how i'm playing i'm gonna probably rush in there a little bit more i'm gonna use my uh drones i'm gonna refresh my skills a little bit of a different strategy right And there's no guarantees in life. I mean, I can still die, right? And that's the glass cannon right there. Do you see that? That's a little, it's a little bit of everything. It's everything working together, but glass cannon is what gives you that extra edge to bust that drone or kill her, basically. I did both. I killed her and busted that drone. I had the RPMs, the DPS to do it, basically, right? Basically DPS. And here come the drones. And then you have to heal up. So this is what I'm talking about right here. Like right here. Like if we're evaluating DPS in a continuous fire moment, those heal ups <laughs> have to be part of it. So how can DB, you know, we really can't measure it. And so we can't, there's no system out there to measure it. Right. And so uh, you have to eyeball it. So right there, my DPS is with one. So it's amazing DPS. Cause I killed that, that lady as she's running. Right. Getting some ammo real quick. So I'm waiting for them to come in because, you know, again, optimal range, effectiveness of your damage, right? And so when you're shooting guys that are always in the back like that, you're. There are, there are misses, whether you can tell or not, right? I'm not landing 100% of those shots. And that means I'm burning around. The farther they are, the more shots I'm missing, right? And also, the less impact those bullets are having. But some of them are never going to come forward, so I'm doing a little lead encouragement. But I'm also trying to get rid of those snipers. Because they love to play deep.
But you see what I'm saying here, right? Like, the point here is glass cannon. Is it killing me? It, can you solo legendary glass cannon? And every room is going to be the same throughout the entire thing. Entire thing. The only room that changes a little bit is the boss room. But every room, there's an advantage point where I can put out shots without getting shot. I shouldn't have been shooting at those deep guys, but. Where's the other Chunga? Isn't there two alive? Or did we kill one on accident? Oh, bad shot. Come on, boy. We got people to see, things to do, parties to go to. Got a social life. Where's he going? I guess it's just him, huh? All right. I, th I thought there was two chungas and one of them was still alive. We accidentally killed one. So there you go. Okay, so that, there was just a point I was making there, right? So that glass cannon is absolutely amazing for legendary if you, again, you know your strategy, right? And so does it matter? My point was, does it matter? Does it matter if I was wearing glass cannon or not, right? It didn't. It didn't because I was, I'm playing for this. Any DPS build, you're going to find me right here behind this dumpster. That's it. So perfect glass cannon absolutely absolutely now if i was running the striker build but i have you would have seen the same results maybe better results all right and and that's because striker gives me more rpms but more important it gives me uh 15 more weapon handling so if i'm landing more shots maybe i would have had uh more ammo maybe not you know, there's always variables, right? There's always variables. How do we measure the effectiveness of a striker build? Well, that's kind of interesting. Explosive delivery um, of a striker build versus this build. At the end, is it the end? If I finish this, is it going to be the end? Absolutely not. Why? Because there's going to be 215 enemies, and I'm going to show 215 kills. Because I'm playing solo, so it's not the kills. Is it the damage? Yeah, sure. You can show, uh, but it wouldn't it be, this is what's good. This is what's ironic. It would be a lower damage number that you're looking for. The lower the damage number, the better. Why? And Reaper knows the answer here. It's because the reason why is because if you have a, if you have, if your DPS is not as great or you miss a lot of shots, which is sort of the same, saying the same thing then when the enemies are standing in their heels you can't kill them instead you put out a ton of damage on them they heal up you put out a ton of damage again on them they heal up you put a ton of damage again on them and they heal up and then you finally kill them so if that guy is if your average elite has about nine million armor on them which they do give or take right about nine million armor then it took you 27 million in damage to kill that one enemy that's going to reflect at the end. So a big damage number, a big damage number at the end is not a good thing when you put it into perspective, right? So, and that's the thing that's what's really unique about legendaries is that there's this heals and there's, there's medics, right? So if you have a, if you have a bad job of a prior, if you do a bad job of prioritizing your targets, and you don't take out that medic and he gets everybody up, you're killing the same enemy over and over and over again because he keeps reviving him. And so that's going to inflate your damage number at the end. You're getting this, right? So, okay. So there's my point. Is glass cannon great? It's absolutely amazing, depending on your content. 
here we go so now what we're gonna do is what i created for you guys before starting the stream is a little timer you see that timer at the top all right so the reality is is that uh here's one of the things is that when you go and so we're trying to what we're trying to learn is like how to evaluate your builds and, and it comes out to effectiveness and, that, and the build's got to have a purpose okay and or you have to have a pur purpose and so that's where we were going before we went to the legendary thing so what we were saying is that this uh, look at if you look at the build as a product right if you look at the build as a product and the product is got to go through a quality assurance process right and so the first the, what they're, they're going to measure that quality and assurance against is what the product's promise is right so what is the promise of this product and this product's promise is an amazing a fast time to kill which is going to give you the best survivability in the game so this builds saying what, what people are have pro attached to this build is that this build has the best survivability in the game that's the promise right and then what's the purpose why do you need the uh, great survivability in the game and to, well what is it all about what's the purpose right what's the purpose well you you want to you want to clear content quickly right and that's the, you see where i'm going with the timer you want to clear content quickly you want you want to get as much gear per hour as possible you want the most xp uh as possible right and that's why you want to clear content quickly and so that's a so that's how we were going to measure the build's effectiveness is by saying oh do we have the survivability and can we clear content quickly how long is it going to clear and, and the only way you can really uh the the only way you can really measure that is in a format of comparison right compared to what quickly compared to what because isn't fast subjective like if an hour is fast to me you might say that's slow as fuck like it took you an hour to do that i want to do that in a half hour i consider that a 30 minutes to be fast so that's subjective so we have to compare it against something because the definition of fast is not set in this game by anybody you know unless you're competing for like a particular mission in the speed run and as we just talked about there's more to that than the build <laughs> right and so and as a matter of fact a negotiator's dilemma build would beat this build if this is the meta why is a negotiator's dilemma the meta then if negotiator's dilemma can clear legendary solo faster than this one why isn't negotiator's dilemma the meta yeah right Confu crazy crazy subject we're talking about here right but this build is deemed the meta so this is what we're gonna do all right so we're gonna um we're putting on this crazy glass cannon build all right and then we are gonna try to survive <laughs> um and so yeah revives are gonna count and so like hard 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 dies right so if you go down and 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 one of the uh, civilians picks us up then not a big deal okay but what we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna clear these four control points all right these are my regulars like so i do these four control points all the time okay and so we're going to clear these four control points we're going to set the timer on it and then we're going to switch bills to the striker build which you know we will we'll talk about the we'll recap the dps numbers but the striker build at full uh how do you have full stacks is doing a better dps than the this quote unquote meta build right because dps cannot be measured i don't think dps should be measured i don't especially when you're running fast hands right like if you're running fast hands fast hands doesn't affect the, the uh, single mag dps fast hand eff affects a multi mag dps <laughs> right and so yeah anyways you see the factors there so uh but uh, you know and 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 so we're gonna well, that'll be a factor but as we can tell like the testing range is limited these enemies these paper targets are going to be shooting back at us we're going to take damage in here how much is that going to slow us down and so time we're talking about time i think that is the one thing in this game that unites everything it unites everything right who's the best player in the game well the guy that can do the hardest content the fastest right that we've all agreed upon that basically somewhere in a contract that you didn't know you signed <laughs> right presented by the devil 
No, but like, so these are the things that we've agreed upon. So I think time, right? And so the build's purpose is uh, to provide us maximum survivability. They say like that, you know, the, the best time to kill is the best. It gives you the most survivability. And that's partially true. I would agree with that to a limit. So, but at the same time, if you're stopping to heal up, if you run out of armor kits and you can't shoot anymore, what do you do? How is that? How is that saving you? How's your time to kill saving you if you can't shoot anymore? Well, now we got to take 10 kills to get back to 100% armor. You don't have to get back to 100%, but you got to get at least two, three kills to get back into a comfortable place again where you can start shooting again, right? 20, 30% armor. So lots of questions, lots of questions, but let's get to it. And we can talk about it as we go. But evaluating the builds. And so it's, it's all, I think it's all going to roll up to this master point. Okay, so let's start the timer. It's going to go basically right when we uh, exit this door and we'll just keep that consistent. All right. So with the, the next build, so right as we exit the door, the timer starts. All right. And so it's not, a, uh, we just got to be reasonably quick. We don't have to do anything ridiculous, right? So we're just going to play it like we do normally. And for me, I like to play fast, right? And so I like to clear these things. Like with my Mantis build, as an example, I can clear uh, the first half of a control point in about somewhere between two and three minutes. Three minutes is pretty average for me. So... Somebody behind us, isn't there? Yep, there always is, isn't there? Fuck. Run. <laughs> that grenadier is not going to be nice to be hit with a grenade while running glass cannon, right? But if our time to kill is quick and he's a, he's a serious target, we should be able to handle him. He's the greatest threat, right? There we go. Look at that. And we're down, right? There you go. I'm proving my point here, <laughs> right? Now, I could just as easily die with, like that with the striker build, right? So it's just a way to cook your crumbles. So it's too early to judge, right? But I'm just saying that that's a that situation, right? Now, the reality is, is that it's not the glass cannon part I'm critiquing. It's not. It's not. Okay, the part that I'm critiquing is that there's no self-sustaining ability. That's the part that I'm I'm saying boo to, right? It has nothing to do with crits. It has nothing to do with glass cannon. What I'm talking about is like I only got 10% armor on kill, right? And so here's the argument. So people that claim that this is the meta build, right? It's just like, well, where's your self-sustaining ability? So, so if if time to kill is the most important factor in your build and in life of this game that's the difference between staying alive or not then why are you building around that where is your armor on kill right if you have the killing power where's your armor on kill an example of that is uh look at them look at my damage my armor an example of that is um hunter's fury hunter's fury plays into that and that's why we like hunter's fury right it's it's got the time to kill and it's got the uh, survival self sustain. Oh, that's a red guy. I thought he was my guy. It's got the sustainability built into it, right? Because if you have to, that, and that's what I'm saying. That's why it's got great DPS. Because if you have to stop and heal, that takes away from your DPS, right? That time to, to equip that armor kit is DPS pull, right? But uh, what I'm showing you here is glass cannon. Look at my armor. Oh, oh, get back, get back. So let's go for the weak guy so we get 10% armor back, right? So a little play strategy in there, right? Get the quickest kill to get your armor back. And then uh, fast hands is saving me otherwise. Believe it or not, fast hands is amazing. <laughs> oh, shit. And then we're back to high, so we didn't have to apply an armor cap, I don't think, right? I don't think we did. 
so we had to hurry up and get our 10 kills plus our drones help kicking in a little bit right But there's more to this than the build, okay? So your experience with this build might be different. So why, why so far have I earned success with this build, right? And that's because I knew where the spawn doors were coming out. I knew where to park it. Basically, that was that's it. Not that hard, right? You'll pick figure that out too eventually you, if you haven't already. But these are the spawn doors. There's three of them, four of them technically. One's inside here. There's that one. There's that one. And then, or there's actually five. There's that one, and there's one around the corner. So I, I stayed close to those so that I could kill them right when they came out. And that's part of my survivability. All right. So it's not all the build. And so that's what I'm saying. So that was part of our discussion that we brought up yesterday. It's like, well, is it really the build or is it me? Is it me that's winning? And if you, if you don't know me, I mean, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't play like me, I guess is I should, is the right way to say it. Like if you don't play like me or if you don't know as much as me yet, because uh, you're new to this game or you don't, or you don't play control points as much, right? Then is this build the meta for you, for you, right? Can it be? Or will this build get you killed more than anything? It'll probably get you killed more than anything. It will because you got to know if you're standing in the right on the wrong spot that that fucking door is going to open and then you can get shot in the back and you're not going to doesn't matter what your DPS is. Or if you don't have good uh, accuracy yet, you can be missing a lot of shots and you're going to run out of ammo or that's going to get you killed, right? Doesn't matter what your DPS is if you don't if you can't land a shot. And so part of what we talked about yesterday also was like, you know, there's a lot of things like um, whether it build is God rolled or not. And, you know, and that's all the same question. It's all the same. It kind of goes into the same thing, like, you know, basically a good build versus a bad build. Right. And so, like, if you say, well, this builds better because it has better DPS. OK. And what's that DPS difference? Well, it's got and why does it have better DPS? And let's just say, well, it's got a million. Uh. Or let's just say 20% more weapon damage on it. Maybe that's the difference. That's why it's stronger. Maybe that's it, right? Let's just, just making that up. Okay, cool. And then you play that mission over and over again, and then you find like, okay, well, at the end, that means I got uh, a legendary. I, you know, got a couple million more in damage, and I killed, you know, 10 more enemies than my, than my homies did with that build, right? Now, let's say you take the same build and then you, you take off 20% weapon damage because maybe you got shit rolls, you know? Okay, so 7 minutes and 17 seconds. We died uh, hard once, right? So we died hard once all the way. Which is fine. We're not talking about perfect gameplay. That's not the point. It's okay to die. And so we're going to play this just like we do anything else. Actually, but I'm not going to open up those things just because uh, we won't be doing that on round two. What's good, Smitzy? Uh, it said you just got to go to your expertise system. So if you're proficient in those uh, skills or exotics, then you just upgrade. You just hit the uh, level up. But if you're not even there yet, then, you know, you're, the question I think you want to ask is, how do I become proficient? You know, and so the easiest way to become proficient in anything, whether it's a skill or an exotic, is to have it equipped and to be using it. Play with it. And then second to that is you can donate to it. Donate resources. And if you go into the expertise system, you'll see that, how to do that.
So basically, what deaths come down to, oh, look at that. Ugh. What deaths come down to is time, right? So when you die, it's not about playing perfect or not. We all gonna make mistakes as individuals. And so that can't be part of the build evaluation. Oh, well, I played mistake free and you know, this build helps me play mistake free, right? Well, can it? Can it be part of the build evaluation? Well, let me give you an example. If I was comparing this to a a headshot build, which I will be doing, then doesn't the headshot build require like it's a one shot one kill? So you know, <laughs> it requires more perfection, right? It requires more of a play perfect to gameplay style a little bit, right? Because if you're out of cover with no shield, <laughs> if you don't land that one shot on the head, basically, you're going to die. But otherwise, uh, everything is going to come down. The, so the, the way to equalize all of that is just going to come down to time. What and then we're talking about that. So what makes a good build, right? Time time because that's what the, the build is a product so i'm gonna keep trying to repeat this and so i can try to refine how i'm saying it but like the build is a product and what it's promising to do is give you uh, uh if you roll up all of its promises basically it at the end it all translates to survivability right well it promises to give you a great time to kill it, it promises to give you awesome survivability uh, it promises to give you tankiness it promises to give you armor and kill whatever it is we're looking for at the end of the day is the ability to clear content quickly basically by not dying and then there's the whole fun thing but again that's all subjective the fun part is like what's fun to me is not fun to you i don't know i wish it was can't all be winners huh But remember, we're running perfect glass cannon without a shield. So, let's just go. But that's what we say. Uh, like, uh, I say it all the time. Like, I don't run to recommend glass cannon for, for new players um, for on DPS, usually. And even on some of my hybrids. Um, because what's what's allowed me to really do it is my is it's the little things that you might not even notice. It might just look like I'm playing the game like everybody else, and I am. But what's the difference is that um, like how I'm prioritizing my targets, my routes. Like I, I understand I'm about to get flanked here, right? My routes, the way I run, the way I jump, my tuck and rolls my d constant displacements which have all just kind of fallen into oh fuck i got hit by a fucking grenade oh i'm gonna go down here oh yep where did that even come from but that which has all evolved into just my don't run in that fire buddy don't run in that fire thank you it's all kind of evolved into just who i am and how i play now right so now it's just, it for me it's not i'm not doing anything extra it's just how i play now so wait, even if i was playing with my regulus if i was playing with my no scope sniper build it doesn't matter this is how i play now right it's just how i play so shield or no shield i'm gonna be moving quickly but those are the things that's why i'm saying that's why uh, the same build that can be meta for me is going to be really hard to be meta for you and Or who you're playing with right if I'm if I'm having to pick up an ally all the time Then I, you know That might get me that it might actually get me killed. So my team will plays a factor in it, too
Ah, oh, bad decoy. I'm waiting for it to drop there. Oh, that'll get us the boss. Fuck. Get off me. So if I was running an all red build, just so you know, it would have been the same amount of damage I just took there. That, you know, so the damage, the amount of damage I take has nothing to do with glass cannon. As much as people thinks it is, it's like, oh, this glass cannon is going to wipe your armor or whatever. No, I mean, it's true. You get hard, you get harder. You get taking amplified damage, but I'm all reds anyways. I'm weak as fuck anyways, right? I mean, <laughs> you're all reds or you're not. So it's more about, um... It's more about how fast you recover than anything. And for me, how fast I recover is really coming down to how fast I kill, because I only got 10% armor on kill, and I got a little bit of heals, but... It's just, the heals are giving me an edge, so there it is. There it is. Yeah, sorry if I'm not getting to all you guys' questions right away, but uh, the gameplay will slow down a little bit in a little bit here. Just want to keep it fair in the evaluation of a build. Oops, don't delete that. Ooh, that's interesting, huh? Too bad it's not anything we could actually use. If you're going to run Overlord, might as well be foxes. Oh, that's a nice one. I might already have it. So yeah, on all of them, I will be slowing down to pick up gear because God forbid we waste gear. No, because that's what it's about. You know, that's what it's about, right? And so why do we want to play fast? And that's part of the thing. Why do we want to play fast? We want good gear. We want good XP. So this is part of it. This is part of it, right? I'm not, we don't play control points just for the hell of it. <laughs> do we? No, we want good gear and we want, so I'm not, I'm not going to open the stashes though, just because when I go to the second build, uh, you know, the stashes will have already been opened. So I'm just going to collect gear and then we kick going. So I'll keep that consistent with all of them. So we're basically averaging seven minutes per control point. That's not bad. I might have a better one. I'm trying to get backpacks. You remember farm striker backpacks, right? Trobs in the house. Yeah. So again, the the questions that we'll be asking like at the end of this like if i had more armor on kill than just a 10 percent would i be playing faster and i'm playing pretty fast right i'm playing pretty fast but if i took off glass cannon if i just took off glass cannon would i be playing any faster right if I had striker and that's what we're going to that's what we're going to test. So at the end here, we're going to put, I mean, at the next phase, we're just going to run that striker build with striker chest and there's stronger striker builds, but I'm going to, I consider that like number two or three, basically number three in the strength of striker build. So uh, basically almost intentionally running a weaker striker build for comparison's sake, but the strongest striker build I would normally run would be focus and that thing fucking crushes. Striker focus is my strongest build. I love it. So I drop my decoy there. And that's because they always go down in that goalie. So I want to keep them from that goalie. Because when they go down there, I have a hard time killing them. Broke his backpack. That was important, right? Don't let him drop those turrets. See, they love that little goalie down there. They love it down there. It's their favorite little spot. <laughs> They're going to keep trying. What's my advantage here, guys? We already said it, wasn't it? 
So one advantage was I came close to the control. But it's the same one as all of them, right? Like I move in close to the um, the spawn door, right? And with other builds, I even go in there. But uh, that allows me to get them before they spread out and start dropping their turrets. Like if I, most people play at the bottom of the hill, right? If you do that, then they're gonna get all their turrets up and they're gonna be a big pain in your ass. It comes a big fucking heavy. So here's a good test here. We want his backpack, but he's a pain in the ass to show it. So I'm just gonna go for that chest. And here comes a grenade. Got him. Okay, we need ammo now, huh? Okay, let's go. Yeah, I put fast. Uh, fast hands is my new go-to on assault rifles. So, it is a DPS master. It's been lifting my DPS by millions, guys. By millions. Like, upwards of like two millions. And you probably missed the stream where I tested it, but... Yeah, I tested it against Measured, which was my old go-to. And it's like way stronger than Measured. And I just can't believe it, right? We were just talking about that the other day, too. Like, Fast Hands is unbelievable. It's just like, it's a, it's a hard. And I'm like, I get it. Like, I'm like you guys, too. It's like, it's really hard to pull off a... Uh, so we're going to go down there. So that was a user error, right? I should have moved. User error. But, um, like, it's, it's really hard to... To be like, God damn it, like, I'm going to really take off a damage talent for a fucking, you know, a weapon handling talent, you know, like, yep, you are. And it works and it saves my life. You guys don't know how many times it saved my life. It basically eliminates the reload. It's basically eliminating the reload, right? And I've had Chunga and Le solo legendary where the Chunga or even in team legendary where the Chungas are coming around the corner and there's three of them and it's because i i, I eliminated my reloads i i, I out deep I, I basically out dps the chunga and fast says is amazing it's amazing but even just go look on paper just go look on paper in the testing range and as you'll see it's like oh yeah and that's where i say like is is time to kill uh most more important or is dps more important are those the same things? Are we saying the same thing or are we not? You know? There's a, I, I, my definition in, in DPS, just so you know, is, is has more things involved, right? So when I see uh, people just doing single mag DPS checks, I, I, I can't, that doesn't help me anymore, you know? I need multi-mag DPS checks, right? I need to see the average across five mags. That's how I do it consistently. I mean, if you want to know if you can kill an elite in a single mag, that's that's important. That's a different test, right? But if you don't do multi-mag, you're you're uh, you're not comparing the, your build against other. Um, it gets other talents. Right? And some of those talents are like this one, like fast hands and steady hands, right? And so where accuracy is average accuracy is gonna be part of that too. And so that's why like you know you gotta ultimately you gotta get out of the testing range because those targets aren't moving and they're not shooting back. <laughs> and so you need that as part of your DPS because you get suppressed and, but there's no way to truly measure it unless you do it like what we're doing now. I feel like this is sort of one of the better ways is to be like, okay, over, uh, we're going to time the build over my usual farming route. This is my, so it's subjective, right? But as long as I'm consistent with the, with me, with my gameplay, I know me. I know my control points. I know th these four I play all the time. They're my favorites. Some of my favorites, I got more. You know, and so I, you know, and so I'm consistent. There's, it's, it's all subjective, right? And so, but if you did this, you might take you twice as long or twice as fast, you know, and, and. 
but part of what I was uh, what I was saying earlier like when I started this thing is that see what what helps the build and this is the part that you that can't be measured and this is why these why builds are so subjective and so we say how do we measure these builds if it's so subjective how do we do it you know and it, it is how can we call this there's one build for everybody this is the meta if you don't run this build you're garbage we can't say that because what's making this build look good is me and i'm an experienced player do you, if you guys didn't notice okay i climbed before starting before hitting the flag i snuck in here i dropped a decoy right here I snuck in here, okay? And so inside this door is the spawn. I knew that. I knew this is the best cover. I know it's a big threat that they they shoot at me in the back from that goalie. Uh, that's I make I made this, if I didn't know that, if I was a player that was not familiar with this control point and you ran in here and just started fighting, you would have started at the bottom of that hill. They would have put up all of their turrets. They would have launched... Uh, riot foam guys would have been running at you so they would have riot foamed you and the turrets would have been wailing on you that big grenade grenadier chunga would have started hawking grenades at you game over maybe right maybe but what i'm trying to say is that that that's part of what makes these builds look so good and the guy what i'm trying to tell you is that the guys that are calling these builds meta are experienced players players like me that have been around for a long time and they're they're defining what is a good build and what's not but that's because they know everything in the game <laughs> you know what i mean and so what i'm going to show you is that it's those little advantages that make the build look good that make glass cannon look great right but if i didn't know those things i, I would be taking damage all the time and then we i would have been i would have been telling you a different story glass cannon fucking sucks glass cannon needs is there's no survivability in it it's uh, we're taking too much damage we got to find something else and then also i'm i'm landing my shots right <laughs> that's also a little bit of experience right got a good handle on my controller i saw that grenade coming <laughs> so you know but i'm still alive so that was a direct hit and so notice i'm, I'm wearing perfect glass cannon and i took a great direct hit from a black tusk Grand and deer and I'm alive. So glass cannon is not as squishy as you think it is. There's a mechanic built in the game that keeps you alive. Ah, oh, bad, bad. Should have had him. So there's other things I'm doing here that you probably you won't you can't see and you didn't you probably couldn't see right there but I just did a sprint uh, sprint to cover that helps me run faster and it helped me get to the enemy faster and so you guys many of you probably are already doing this but again those are things that make a build look good right Oof, that's gonna hurt that guy's way the fuck back there So this is what I mean. So I'm getting out of view of that fucking turret that's placed like way over there. No, jump, jump. Woo, so fucking close. So cool. Why did it come in here? Again, spawn point. Bosses. Are they going to come out right above me or right in here? Either way, I'm in a good spot. There they are. Boss down. So again, the game strategy, and I'm not bragging, but I'm just saying that like that's what makes the build shine. I was out here before the boss even came out, you know? I knew there was a 50-50 chance that he was going to come out of that door. And I, I, I won that bet. But even if he didn't, he would have walked down those stairs and I would have had the advantage because he's got no cover on those stairs. 
I see his turret and we out DPS before I got to it. So yeah, but it's a good build. It works. So yeah, you can run glass cannon without a shield and play really fast. And as you can see, even out of cover. So I am face syncing a little bit, just not as much, but I, it's cause I, I know I got the DPS, but I'm not going to take damage in the back. That's one thing I can't afford. It's one thing this build can't afford is damage in the back. I can't see anybody. Where is that boss? I see that guy way over there. Bugging the hell out of me. Get him out of the way. Come on down, lady. It's always the same. You got to go up there, then she jumps down. Oh, look, she stuck around. Got to die. Just... Thank you. One more guy somewhere. There it is. 31.45. That's it. So that's all four control points. 31 minutes and 45 seconds. No stats, right? We don't got any stats. Boo. But 31 minutes and 45 seconds, um, it felt quick. You know, we were going as quick as the build can. Um, we were taking damage. We were surviving it, taking hits. We pick up this gear, and then we're going to run the next one, which is going to be our striker build. Now, what's going this is what's going to be crazy, is that we want to look at it at the end of the control point, and there's going to be a difference, of course. There's going to be a difference, right? My strategy is going to be the same. They're both going to be all red builds. They're both going to have 10% armor on kill. One of them is not going to have glass cannon, right? And we saw the DPS differences in the range. And so, but what we're going to see, what I'm, what I'm predicting, my hypothesis is, is that um, the, the DPS difference is going to be minimal or hypothesis A, let me just clean it up like this, is that it's going to be negligible. So we're going to have a timer of, uh, uh, we're going to run striker. And we're going to end up with around 31, 32 minutes. And, you know, it could be oh, and like a plus or minus a couple of minutes isn't going to make a difference. Right? <coughs> because there's user error. Right? And so what you would want to see, you're like, if I'm going to run something dramatic, like perfect glass cannon on this all red build, then I want to see a dramatic increase of my time. Wouldn't you say? If I'm taking the dr dramatic risk, I want dramatic return. You know, and so that's what that's 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 what I'm that's my philosophy. <laughs> Is the juice worth the squeeze? You know, and so it's not whether you can. Of course you can. We just proved it. That was our glass cannon run and gun glass cannon. All right. 
So, of course, I played some from cover, but you saw all the times that I face tanked and won. Okay, so let me clean up a little bit of space here so we don't have to stop for this stuff. And then that should be good. Delete. I'll reset the timer. Don't, don't you worry. I'll reset that bad boy. Uh, I could always use Walker and Harris. I like to look at that. Police M4 optimal range and measured. Wow. I don't think I need that version. So. Okay. 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 So we'll reset the timer right when we get to the door. Everything's reset. So we're going to do the same four control points, the same routine, right? Like that. And our, we got to be 3145. I, oh, I got to change my build, duh. Okay, so... Striker. We're going to go Striker. Is Striker better than an all DPS build? Even if you run the Striker... Now, this is all changing, so... Don't, don't, don't cling on to this, because it's all going to change with the new build, right? New... Um, adjustments to Striker, so... Now, why am I running the contractors versus the foxes, you wonder? And that's because I don't have any damage to armor on the build, right? So I have health damage, damage to targets out of cover. So I'd rather have a new multiplier than more of the same multiplier. So let's take a look. Uh, 55, 108. So that's good enough for me. I think we're good to go. 55, 108. All the skills are going to be the same. So we got repairs. Uh, we're going to have ammo and 10% armor on kill. We still got fast hands on the FAMAS. So everything's the same. Just change the beer set. Same backpack, same gloves. Just change these four pieces. Oops, we got this to change. So let's put this to crit damage. All right. All right, all right. Are you with me? Are you ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Oh, okay. Enough of that. And there we go. New timer. Yeah, so all of these are good builds, but, you know, again, subjective. So, um, and so I'm kind of shedding you light. So but a lot of it's purpose, right? So purpose, purpose. And so um, if fun is a factor in there, I, you know, nobody's going to be able to measure you that. And so, but I think that with fun, wouldn't you say effective? Wouldn't you say effective also has to be part of fun? You can't have, it can't be fun if it isn't effective. <laughs> and effective mean, you know, is it serving the purpose? Is it, are you alive? And fun could just be that. It keeps you alive, right? And it's not just a matter of time to kill because fun could, ooh. That, oh, don't run over there. Fuck. That was a bad fucking, that was bad luck. Like right as we got to that point, we hit a big grenade. Good time to kill there. Look, here comes another incoming grenade. You see that grenade flying? Look at this burn. Can you tell I'm not running glass cannon? Can you? Does it look like I'm running glass cannon to you? Time to kill wise? It does, doesn't it? Can you tell? This is one of my big, my big channel points here, guys. Can you tell the difference between glass cannon and not glass cannon? Can you visually, like if you didn't know I was running striker, would you, and I said that I'm running glass cannon, would you have believed me? Would you believe me? Well. You wouldn't because you'd see those stacks there at the bottom. You'd be like, hey, the little green things. You're not running glass cannon, but time to kill wise. That's what I'm saying. Like time to kill wise. There's a boss deleted. Remember, in the even in the range, when this thing is fully stacked, it's got better DPS than glass cannon. Than the, than the meta build, not just clan, glass cannon, but the meta. This has got better DPS in the meta and I can feel it personally. But if I told myself, if I lied to myself and said, I th I'm running glass cannon or I forgot, you know, like I would believe it. I would believe it. Even on the damage side, 
okay because just like i said like the incoming damage from glass cannon when you're all red it all feels the fucking same you're either all red or you're not glass cannon or not you know and so you'll see all the same i'll take the same damage i heal the same amount i got 10 percent armor on kill there's nothing else you know can i dps somebody that's pressing me can i land my shots can i hit those weak points oh let's not get into that god damn it my bad who's doing the walk of death the walk of death is that sideways walk but you see that i died my point is there is like i died just as fast as if, if i was wearing glass can i would have been dead just as fast so it would have been the same Yes, backpack on that guy, huh? And he's on steroids, not to mention. Where is he? Behind me? Fuck you, dude. And that's what I mean about when you push, if somebody's flanking you, can you DPS your way out of it? And that was the yes. I hate you right from guys. Ah. Don't punch me. Fuck. Don't do it. Fuck. These assholes. That's my bad. You got a little too aggressive. Oh, I don't think I had to go back here. Damn it. Zach Torres, what's up? Frank Ty, appreciate the upgrade, man. I'm glad you figured that up. Right on, brother. Thanks for figuring that out. Yeah, what sucks about dying right there is I think they, they bring back all the enemies you just killed, don't they? It is what it is, though. He's crying over spilled milk. Yeah, so we're restacking. Give me some enemies to kill. Where, where, where? There's one. from somewhere pretty come on dude god damn it we're gonna play in tango do the tango with me we're still back there See that it's like having glass cannon, right? See how many, how much armor we lost, how fast that armor drop was. It was only a couple of bullets. Fuck. Let the heal up from that. Oh, 
Uh, reload. Fast hands. Trust me, that was fast hands. Woo! When you get stuck in a reload, somebody's about to shoot you in the face. It's, you get that fast reload. Nice. We don't want this medic to get busy. That's fast hands again there. You see that? Cool, we did it. So that did the first one we did that at about like 730. So that was like a little about a minute slower, give or take. And in my opinion, is that minute slower had nothing to do with power, had to do with uh, like recovery. Well, user error too. What up, Matt? What up, Live Griff? And that's what I'm saying. Like what bo both builds need, or what make what would make these builds kind of from good to great would be to have another 10% armor on kill, like a 20% armor on kill total. Be able to play even a little bit more aggressive. Cause there are moments when you, when you cower, right? You're like, oh shit, I lost some armor. Let me heal up. And you know, you're talking about seconds. Does it really matter at the end of the day? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Like if you're, I'm talking about the time difference. It doesn't, you know. But over hours upon hours upon hours of gameplay, it does. It does. Because that's part of your enjoyment. Like, what makes the build fun or not is the, um, you know, if you're always having to heal up and go through that whole routine and like, God damn it, I'm always hiding because I, I take too much damage, then the build doesn't feel great, right? God, that turret is up there in a perfect spot. So here it is again, right? Ladies and gents. Doesn't help when they're all hiding, is it? Gotta go get them, which is part of these builds. If they're always hiding. You gotta hunt them down or to slow you down. Can you do it with the build? Is he gonna get you out of cover? Jesus Christ, this fucking guy. <laughs> Way too long back here. Ooh, 
Ooh, he is fucking fast. He's getting people up. Do not want him to live. Don't you punch me. You fucking dick. How did you do that? Oh my god. He was so fast. You saw that I rolled around two corners and he came around to get me. Medic is mine. There's always one isn't there. She got way. She's way back there. Come on, fight. Yeah, it's going to be really hard when they increase the stacks on this thing, man. I mean, well, uh, it's hard with the chest he says it is, and they're going to pump that up to 200 stacks to feel like a god, and like, whoa, that's never going to fucking happen. I mean, we're going to have to force it big time. Like, we have to run really fast weapons, amazing accuracy, no reloads. Back and forth, back and forth. it is it's about halfway to about halfway so good timing I think we, and we went down too so i think we made up but we still made up a little bit of time or it just evens itself out right all right on to the next one Yeah, that guy was fast. He saw that. So the uh, live grip. This is a striker build. Four piece striker, striker chest, contractors, and a group of backpack with vigilance. So we're comparing the meta against the uh, just a four piece striker, and it's not about which builds better. That's not what it is. So one of them was 
it kind of helping other people understand at one point is that we were helping people understand that glass cannon perfect glass cannon is absolutely viable in the hands of the right player and so that that it's it's not um you know necessarily great for like the newer the newer person in the game that's doesn't understand these control points like this is part of my survivability like where i'm headed right now like i'm headed at the this back i know that this little goalie is a weak point here so i'm gonna drop my decoy right there so these are the little tricks that make a glass cannon build look good right and so I, that's the stuff that i worked into it but what we're, we're we're talking about is how do you evaluate a build you know um and it's obviously not the testing range <laughs> or is it Definitely easier in the testing range to say it builds better. It really is. In the testing range, it's so easier to say a build is a one build is better than the other. Oh, I didn't see you camouflage. God damn, he's jumping all over the place. There it is. Fast, huh? Might need a little bit of ammo after that one. Detecting additional hostile contacts. Where is my control point losers? They didn't decide to, they decide not to come, huh? Oof, oof. Where is that coming from? Shoot, what the fuck? Oh my god. Come on, man. I didn't see that guy at all. At all. Like not on my mini map or nothing. He was just there all of a sudden. Track, huh? Damn it. Good moves. Come on. God. God damn it. This is so fast. Like, like he's outrunning my bullets as he's climbing, which is like ridiculous. Don't you do it. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Don't you do it. It's going to fuck up my test. God damn it. He won't pick me up. It's gonna fuck it up. Come on, man. Try, 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 try. Thank you. Wow, he never does that. He never tries twice. Oh, God. Okay, I'm gonna have to restart. No way he's coming back from that. That sucks.
Yeah, Brassy, we do uh, countdowns. I doubt much people are doing it right now, but um, on September 12th, we'll probably see a lot more of that again. Or it's September 13th. Give me a quick second. I'm going to reset my sound. Here we go. Another rifle from guy, huh? Fucking rifle from's gonna be the end of me, bro. And fire and everything. Control, control. You want to control these guys, right? Keep them contained. Don't let them spread out. That's why it's really important to get to those the spawn points as fast as possible. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Where'd he go? I'm actually get that gear. He ran down the damn street, didn't he? Come here, buddy. He knew what was coming, didn't he? All right, so we lost a little bit of time there, but all good. Gotta grab some ammo. Supply room access unlocked. For the next mission. Oh, fuck. Did that timer restart? It did when I reset the. Oh my god, that just messed up everything. Did anybody catch that time? We were close, huh? It's gonna have to be an estimation now. When I reset the sound, reset the timer. Ah! Okay, so if we if we clear this in about um, like seven minutes, we'll be right around the same time. Let's see here. So I think that puts us at about like twenty six. I probably around twenty six minutes. So let me reset the timer to here. There we go. We were in the ballpark anyways, but that's frustrating. Fuck, my bad. I think we could already kind of tell. So the uh, the meta build cleared it in a, a, about 32 minutes, right? We were at like 31 something. Unless anybody saw that time. Timer was at 21. Thanks, bro. Okay, I was gonna say, does anybody see that time right when I reset? Thank you. That helps me a lot. Timer's at 21, and then uh, it added three minutes. So we were at 24, basically 30. We'll just call it 24, 30. Sounds about right. And it's okay if there's a margin of error. It's The point is, is like, there shouldn't be a, we shouldn't expect a big gap. That was my hypothesis, at least.
Really? <laughs> the way he's outruns, the way they outrun your bullets, it always does amaze me, I gotta say. Right formers out of the way first. You don't want those guys sticking you. There's a boss. Coming to the fight or not? Come on. Really? The fuck? Wow. <laughs> little dancer. Mary Poppins over there. That, huh? Right from the left this time. Oh, tank. I don't want to fight the tank. Looks like they're coming up and over. Get out of my way, dude. Clear that tank because it's fucking gonna keep them from coming in here. He's way back there. You see that? I don't know if he's part of this control point or not, but I'm gonna have to go fetch him. Coming in, boys. Thank you for killing one. There's a chunga out there. There's a boss. Broke his helmet already. Shoot out my decoy. It's right out there. here because they're not gonna come in you hit by air there it is seven minutes so seven 
plus um uh it's like three and a half so let's say uh 10 and a half plus 20 more 21 so 31 30 31 30 by estimation of course 31 30 by estimation versus 31 45 so basically the same whatever margin of error in there would be acceptable i think <laughs> it's just there right hold on let me just kill this guy so we can talk about this guy talk about the stuff because he's gonna bug me I mean, you guys probably all saw, I think you guys probably all saw the point a long time ago, right? Like, probably halfway through this series is that they both look and act like glass cannon, ultimately. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. And, you know, like, you couldn't tell the difference between time to k kill. And if you can't tell the difference between the time to kill and, and perfect glass cannon meta build and this one, then does it exist? It's, not, it's like that same question of like, if a tree falls in the forest and you can't hear it, does it exist? If the time to kill is faster on the meta build, but you can't tell, then does that time to kill speed actually exist? If we cleared four control points in the same time using two different builds, is one better than the other? Situationally, I could, I would say yes, situationally, right? But you could, I think you'd go one way or the other, both of them. Uh, you could, you could argue, like it's arguable though. It's arguable. Well, you know, maybe if I was running glass cannon and I, I would, and I would actually say this, this is me saying this. Uh, this is me saying this it, it's arguable so like like i would say there were one or two times where i went down like i remember there was a guy in the last control point the hope control point and the guy was uh running he was running up uh this like he was climbing and i was like man he could climb he climbed so fast he outran my bullets if you remember that statement now if i have if i had a a, a better time to kill or if I was running glass cannon, let me just put it that way. If I was running glass cannon, maybe I would have killed him before he did this, his little climb. You know what I mean? Um, but in that situation, was it the difference between life and death? No. Would it have saved my life? No. What would it have done? Uh, in the grand scheme of things, absolutely nothing. It took me 31 minutes and 45 seconds to clear both control points. Almost, they were almost exact same time. Almost the exact same time. So the extra whatever d extra dps we can if there is any more dps that comes out of um momo kcw that comes out of the uh glass cannon version of the build the, the meta one if there is any damage advantage advantage out of this one it rarely shows up and definitely not over concurrent gameplay so this build doesn't outperform the strikers build they both did so the, the, if they, like i said if we look at these from a product perspective this build is a product what does it promise to do well it promises to give you um more survivability well what would you do with that more survivability well i would clear content faster and get more gear and thus more xp but all of that can be summed up in time right so this would allow me to clear con because I have more survivability, I would be able to clear content easier and be able to go faster, thus saving me more time and time equals XP and gear in the end. Right. But it didn't. It didn't. You know, there might have been an instance or two where having that glass cannon would have been helpful or there might have been an instance or two where that glass cannon got us in trouble. And that's just going to be down to user error, and it's, that's always going to be there. And the way the cookie crumbles, how the control point lays out, how, you know, uh, you got the wrong boss and he hits you with the wrong grenade, you know. So you, you can't control those are uncontrollable, uncontrollable variables. But what we can see is that uh, with all the variables that 
could possibly happen across four control points that we ran twice with both builds the time was the same and approximately right so they were both about 31 minutes with each build so the running glass cannon didn't really add me any value you know uh but it also didn't take anything away but more importantly it's just like it's that that it's not the best build in the game that's what's most important i think i would say right that's not the best build in the game it's just not it's not the meta it's not the meta the striker build can do everything that this one can do and the most important way of measuring that is going to be in time and it's got and it's going to be subjective it's going to be based on your gameplay so in, in other words you can't watch a youtube stream and say oh yeah it's the best because he's doing it it's the best build it can't be because i might be better or worse than you right so you got to put into perspective is all i'm saying right you got to put into perspective anybody so just because it's I, I can make I can make a build shine more than another build based on my play style, how aggressive I am, or how laid back I am, or if my teammates aren't as good as me in group gameplay, or if my team is better than me in group gameplay, or as uh, competitive like me, you know, and that that's going to change the build. So, you know, and uh, yeah, that's a big deal that's a big deal and so that's the topic that's the topic we're, you know we're circling back full circle which is how do you how do you measure build effectiveness and only you can do that. you can't be any geek off the street darwin. gotta be handy with the steel if you know what i mean appreciate you darwinia welcome to the club man players club thank you for supporting me in the channel right on right on to all of you uh, like darwinia that are new to the players club um, you can find your access to uh, the members content right at the top of my YouTube channel. The links are dropping in the chat uh, all by themselves, but I'll go ahead and drop a chat uh, a link anyways. So there's a link to my channel, Darwinia. But of course, you've, I'm sure you've been there already. But right, what I want you to notice is that right at the top is a members only playlist. Uh, and inside there, because you're true Bandito member level, you'll get access to all the classified builds and all of that other fun stuff. And if one day you decide to upgrade your membership, uh, you can also get access to like Tux's uh, gaming music playlists and stuff like that. So welcome, 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 welcome. Yeah, Rise of Reap. Yeah, I do love the burnout's amazing. So there's there's all sorts of things that we can go with these for these to change these builds and to optimize them for your play style. But that's what I'm thinking. So does the meta exist? It doesn't. That meta doesn't exist. There is no meta. I I mean I, I firmly believe that. You know, and I call these things the meta just to help you understand, kind of put things into perspective on like what we're we talking about here. But I don't I don't believe there's a meta. I mean, a meta for me would say that there's one build that can be used in all PVE content. It could be used in all the legendaries. It could be used in all the heroics. It could be used in uh, team play and it will be used in solo gameplay. And it can be used by a new player and it can be used by an experienced player. And that build does not exist. If you think it does exist, I would love to hear about what it is. And I'm not saying you're wrong, you know, I, but I would love to hear your ideas because uh, there, there might be one out there that I'm not thinking of, right? And so like, like I got a hybrid build that we use a lot, me and Reaper use it a lot, and it's called Game Over, right? And I mean, when somebody asks me, hey, what skill build should I use for legendary? We often re re refer them to that one, right? Uh, it's tried and trusted. But is it for everybody? I would say like, hey, a new, for a new person, you could use it um, because it's forgiving. So if you make mistakes, it's going to help you recover and it's strong. And you could solo legendary with it and you could group legendary with it. So it's got all the elements to be a meta. But the reality is 
is that if you don't play into the build, it's not the meta and it never will be. You know? And what I mean by like adjust your playstyle to the capabilities of the build, it's never going to be the meta. So from my perspective, I'll just sum it up there and leave it there, which is I don't believe a meta exists. I don't think it ever can exist in this game. And so and I think that might be unique to the Division 2. Maybe maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But I think the build complexity that's that's given to us in this game prevents a meta. And I think that that it's it's there's too many types of builds too much well we don't have the tools to measure all these things either like wouldn't it have been cool to see like what my true dps was outside of all that thing time aside but either way my dps was this in the end 31 minutes basically 31 minutes four control points in 31 minutes that was my dps that's my dps in the end of what we just did right And we would say, well, there's 50, there, on average, uh, I mean, I unfortunately have to estimate, there's 50 enemies per control point. So that was 200 control, that was 200 kills. So I got 200 kills in 34 minutes or 200 kills in 31 minutes. I'm sorry, it was 31 minutes. So 200 kills in 31 minutes. That was my DPS. But, we, and so we used what is commonly uh, relied on as the best build in the game right there right now one of the things to make it officially the best build in the game or the the meta in the game or whatever they call it would be to put on the m1a but this is the ar version of that right but the point was it added no additional it did not give us an additional return than the striker build so glass cannon or no glass cannon running with you run what would really blow your mind is if you took the striker build and then ran glass cannon and now you now you <laughs> you have a blend of both worlds and it should outperform then right so you can you can go faster right you can go faster if i use my mantis build and was clearing the control point in three minutes i can shave a minute and a half to two minutes off of every control point and, and that would make us go eight minutes faster that could be dramatic or not You know, so does it say, did it do what it said it was going to do? And on the striker build, yes. On this build, no. I believe it did not do what it said it could do. And what people say, and what, what and, and it's they, it's what they say that it, can, that it can do. They being the people that claim this is the best build in the game. It did not give us time advantage it which means it was not it's not it's not the best build in the game and you see i was running out of cover with it i was uh i went down a minimum amount of times for running glass can away once maybe twice maybe twice you know no shield we were out dps and the enemy I brought a, a, a nice time to kill but it did if it was the best in the game it would have kicked the shit out of out of um it would have kicked the shit out of the striker build and it didn't it tied the striker build in the end right so it did not deliver the delivery would have been the delivery would have been to stand out as the best build in the game to stand out against striker you know and it just doesn't do that it just kind of falls flat right it's a great build there's nothing wrong with the build nothing wrong with the build but so do you so you so i hope this is helpful in in evaluating your build so so i'm kind of walking through the process what is it that my build wants to do and you know so we, we're going to apply it to a new build right hmm <laughs> So now we're going to do this off meta build and we're going to do the same thing. I wonder, this is completely off meta. I wonder, will we go faster or slower? Will it take us longer? I don't know. But um, it'd be interesting to see the, the gap.
between these builds, right? Jag33, thanks for the sub. Thanks for everybody that's subbing over on Twitch. Appreciate that. Yeah, Tom Cruise mom shoes, but it didn't it didn't I, I get but we saw it we did the testing range thing too and we did DPS value DPS in the testing range with a non-moving target as well, right? And so no, I know what you mean. Like the striker striker from scratch, like building those stacks from scratch, uh, gave us 7.1 DPS on a non-moving target, right? 7.1 million DPS. The quote unquote meta build. Uh, this one uh on a single mag oh i'm sorry um uh, doing the same build up well i'm sorry let me rephrase that they it gave us 6.2 million dps across five reloads so 7.1 to 6.2 so striker was stronger right because as you're stacking because you're stacking you're continuing to stack and so over multiple reloads over five reloads, the the DPS from striker is going to be greater. Now on a single mag, if you're inside a single mag, then this build that you're looking at is stronger than the striker build, right? It's going from zero to basically 50 stacks, you know, um, on striker. This build is stronger than that. So, but it, that's that's containing your DPS inside a single mag. But that's not how the gameplay works. It doesn't work out that way. So it's just all, it's like, that's a false reality, right? Like when I go out there, of course I have striker stacks. I'm never, I only, the only time I'm starting from zero is basically in the very beginning of a, a control point. Even when I go down and I'm on my hands and knees and my ally picks me up, I still have stacks usually, you know what I mean? So you, with a striker build, you always have stacks unless you're not ever shooting <laughs> you know and on a weapon of 900 rpms it's we can't call it a challenge to get stacks right so yeah for for sure that's always going to be the argument of uh where somebody somebody's always going to make that argument well this one doesn't have stacks it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it still took 31 minutes to control four to clear four control points and striker took the same 31 minutes this one added no extra value stacking or no stacking you saw it the the um the four piece striker build appeared to have glass cannon at the same time to kill from the very beginning even with the stacking right now this one probably had a faster time to kill but my point is my point always is is that that time to kill is imperceivable to the human eye and to our our reaction times can't pick up on that it's a microsecond you know and i and i've done these videos where i, I actually record it so i'll go in and record me killing the same enemy with this build and me killing the same enemy with another build not running glass cannon not running contractors not running fox's prayer and i have to go frame by frame literally frame by frame to determine which one actually kills faster on the same enemy all else being equal and if it comes down to doing that like i said does the difference in dps actually exist no it's the, the whole thing if a tree falls into the forest and nobody hears it <laughs> did it make a sound you know if it's got faster dps but nobody can tell and sometimes you can't tell sometimes you can't tell it depends on what you're comparing it to of course Yeah, I wouldn't run to 1886 in Legendary. You can. You can, though. But Legendary NPCs, um, they move. They're, they're always, there's a lot of moving going on, <laughs> right? They're, they're pushing forward. They're falling back. They're diving left and right. And also, I'm not a big fan of just in general rifles on tech, uh, which is, you know what I mean? Even the M1A, like, I don't sh like shooting these rifles against tanks and warhounds of course you can i don't like shooting the snipers either at tanks and warhounds it's just not very fun you know same with pistols i don't like that either i mean unless it's the card 
but the my guns that uh, i prefer to shoot at tech are assault rifles you know and that's because they have that nice health damage you could feel that you know but yeah no, i'm not a big fan of the 1886 yeah. and legendary I mean, I think like assault rifles are one of the one of my favorites to run legendary all around. Yeah, so so, you know, when it comes to figuring out if your build is good or not, it's only it's only going to be you. And so uh, but what I invite you to do when you're creating your builds is um, define your purpose you know and so and that will also help you when you're kind of jumping in with the team and whatever is to ask yourself what's the purpose of this build and you know and, and, and can that be suitable for a team setup you know And so your purpose of your build might be to might be pure team support build, right? That might. And so you and then that's and if it's a team support build, you 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 can only evaluate that with a team that needs support. And so, you know, is it to give them armor? And if so, how good of a job to, is it at giving them armor? And it, and it usually comes back down to time, right? Can you keep their armor up full time, right? Or minimum cooldowns on your Vanguard or, you know what I mean? That kind of thing, right? Um, can you, can you have a hundred percent uptime on your bonus armor? Um, and you can, you know, you can by mixing in things like galvanized and there's galvanized. What else do we got for bonus armor? I mean, for, for groups, you know? Yeah, so this one's not a legendary build. This one's more of a heroic build. And this one is uh, one of the objectives is to apply double status effects. Did I get him? No. Um, and so like, so you got the riot foam and then you have the um the on kill disruption from hunter's fury and then besides that it's just to, cut, to kind of cut up the bullshit cut out the bullshit oops that was not a headshot kill so you know how like the enemies do cartwheels and crazy shit like that or riot foam and oops let's go and kill that guy and Stuff that's kind of annoys you over time. <laughs> this build kind of cuts some of that out. Okay, so let's charge up. And so I'm kind of making a um, a demonstration with it, showing that the riot foam is so helpful that you can point blank with your nemesis, right? And uh, it's pretty fun. <laughs> Sounds kind of acting funny, isn't it? So, all right, so we're working on getting our stacks up. A lot of different stacks going on in this build, right? So you got, we got 40% armor on kill. We got, um, so 20% is coming from the gear set. 20% is, oh, I just killed him with that. You see that? 20% uh, is coming from the gun preservation.
And then you got the headhunter stacks, right? On top of it all. These guys are all over the place. But look at how far he ran over here. Yeah, I don't know why this sounds acting like funny. Give it a minute. It's going out for me too. It's being temperamental. Is that the right word? Sound goes on lunch breaks and doesn't tell me sometimes. Miss that fucking shot. And then you just use that to get your shot back. God, that sound is acting nasty right now. I need that crunch sound to know I got that headshot kill. It does help. You know what I mean? million so yeah i don't have to use the uh, nemesis at this stage but it's part of the demonstration once you're all charged up once you got all your stacks and everything you're good to go but but some bosses will go down on one and some bosses will go down with two so So when it comes to the boss, I'm just going to play it safe and... Oh, he just took damage from my right phone. God damn it. So... One and a half? <laughs> so, the, there's a, I have to say this every time with this build. So, uh, with Headhunter... There's a glitch right now. Well, that sucks, but it uh, basically transfers your headhunter stacks through the riot foam So you can literally kill an enemy with the riot foam and it's uh, That sounds cool, but it's not <laughs> So anyways, that was faster than both builds so far. So seven minutes that's faster than the glass cannon build Sorry about the sound guys. I, I don't know why it's acting up, but I can't reset it because it'll set the clock reset the clock so Or I can mark the time once I, I land, I'll mark the time and then I'll reset it. Seven, this is called seven uh, thirty, and then I'll reset reset this. Actually, I'm doing it in a way that doesn't reset the time. So, freaking OBS via OBS just got an update. So some of the plug I gotta affect some of the plugins. Kind of annoying. So one of these builds is for speed. It's like I said, the riot foam and the status effects and then a one shot, one kill combination. It cuts out a lot of BS, right? And so one of the BS things that we talk about is like the enemies doing that sideways walking that gets you killed. That's that's the type of BS that I'm talking about. Like, and then another BS is um, the car, the amount of cartwheels that they, they land on you or that they try to do on you, I mean. Um, and also the riot foam. Your riot foam is better than their riot foam. And so you can show off with that. So unfortunately, we got a convoy coming in here. Oh. So that's going to slow us down a little bit. It's not a little convoy. It's a big boy convoy.
Where, where, where is that damage coming from? Way back here, huh? So we got plenty of riot foam. Ooh, get down, get down. Power and survivability, right? So we got it all in this build. And the survivability, the part of that survivability is the status effects, but one shot, came, one shot kill is nice. Just litter the floor with trophies, right? Let's get this guy to come down. Come on down, boy. I got you covered. Oops, bad shot. There we go. And so you don't mind taking damage because you know you're going to get it back real fast. That's the difference between this build and the other ones is that damage recovery is absolutely amazing. Time to kill being on the side. I mean... Fast as fast. Those other ones had a really fast time to kill, but this is faster, obviously, with one shot, one kill. But there's a condition on that, right? Which is got to be able to land headshots. And some people, that's harder than others. That wasn't a headshot. That was not a headshot. Got him. Oh, what? Point blank, huh? <laughs> Good old riot foam. And with this build, you don't need your riot foam to be like longest riot foam in the world. You just need it to be effective. Fuck, I shouldn't have zoomed in. 32 million. No more cartwheels for you. Medic. Hold him still. Let's load up. I don't really want to mess with that convoy, you know what I mean? I'm trying not to mess with it. Because it's going to uh, take away from our comparison. I mean, it's okay if it does, but... Might not have been a headshot. Ugh, he ran away. You see that? Holy shit, he ran away. Sets up his turn and ran away like really far. <laughs> Taking damage. Acceptable. A bad shot. A hurry shot. Stop him. That guy's a nightmare. Oh, shit. My bad. Jump. I fucking missed that. 
bad. We don't miss shots around here. We gotta stop this guy. He's gonna make it longer if we don't. God damn it. I keep doing that. I'm getting greedy. I need to start off with the nemesis. Now we're a party. Did I hit you or not? I did. Hold still. There it is. Oh, I got greedy. I think she might be our last. Left me with that one. There it is. Crash it down. So normally I would go for the rest of those guys, but I'm not going to because it'll break the time. We're right about the same time. THC Rizzle, Leo. What up, Viking golfer? You sure a star? I like to see Tar. Yeah, I wish that, yeah, the only thing, the only reason why I don't use the C-Tar as much, like Grumpy's pointing out, is the, is the mod attachments. That's, that's the number one reason. Like, you can't even put the 3.4X scope on there. It won't even take that. And that really sucks. Uh, I like the um, so a sure star good question I like the police m4 better I do and one of the reasons why I ran the um, the FAMAS today is just because a lot of people that claim that one build is the meta usually run it with the FAMAS or the M1A or both that's the only reason but the other the other reason why is because I am trying to get better with that uh for Moss, because I believe with the new striker build, I think all the RPMs that we can get are going to be uh, important. You understand? Like all the RPMs we can get, because we got so many stacks to pull to pull in. You can't be any geek off the street. Got to be there handy is. with the steel if you know what I mean. See, this build has amazing survivability, but it's conditional on being able to land headshots, isn't it? You know, again, there's no meta build. It's going to prove out to be, based on what we see so far, it's going to prove out to be... Ooh, fire. It's going to prove out to be, time-wise, equal. If time is the factor that unites all builds, 
All of them are going to be about the same so far what I can see here. No, no. This gun. Hold still. And that's a loss. Some bosses are going to take um, two shots. Ooh. Some bosses are going to take two shots because um, of all the riot foam you're carrying. You know what I mean? Like, there, there's a sac there's always a sacrifice of something in every build, right? Like, in the meta build, the one that they call the meta, the sacrifice on that one is, is ultimately um, self-sustainability in hills. Chris Barber! Welcome, bro. Appreciate you joining the club, man. Rock. It's a good level, too. If you like the gaming music playlist, you now get access to them. You can find all of that stuff. There's a link right there in the chat uh, to the channel. I'll drop another one here in a few minutes once I pick this stuff up. Or actually, next control point. Because we're on a timer here. But appreciate you, man. Thanks for supporting, supporting the channel. But for me, this is like a really interesting test, just so you guys know, like to see them all panning out to be basically the same time. And they all have their own conditions, right? So which one's the best build? I can't answer that for you. You know, I can't. For me, this one is. Nobody can answer that for you. Nobody can, and all, all the arguments are null. <laughs> it's funny. And so the only one that can answer that is for, is you and the answer, the question uh, is gotta be asked, what is the purpose? And that you can't answer the bill, the, that question without the other question. God, that's a bad shot. You got to be able to ask that question. Well, what's the purpose of the build, right? Well, the purpose is uh, I want a build that's versatile for all content, uh, for team and heroic. That can that could be a great purpose of a build. Is it going to make it the best build in the game? No, it's just versatile. You want the most versatile build in the game. You can. These are good claims. These are great questions. You know. Shit. Oh, still. No, don't you punch me. Switch. Switch. That riot foam. You see what I'm saying? Fucking lifesaver, bro. Okay, so this guy's tanky, so we're gonna have to hit him a couple times. Let's break that helmet of his. Load. Broken. And then we're gonna go use some of these other guys to build that up. Or damage against them, basically. Okay. You be a pain, you get the foam. That's what happens, bro. You be a pain, you get the foam. I got foam for you. Where's that purple guy? I mean, that uh, boss. I'm saving the purple guy because this, this guy, he fucking tanky. So he's gonna take multiple hits, right? There it is. There he goes, gone. So three shots on him. And again, you could cut that down if you don't want the riot foam, but I love the riot foam. It's, it is the point. Okay, so moving on to the next. There is no Citar exotic. The only Citar, there should be a Citar exotic. That'd be freaking awesome. But the only uh, name C tower we got is um, the rail splitter.
So for everybody that just joined the Players Club, Chris Barber included, I just dropped a link on that YouTube chat. Uh, that'll take you just to the, my YouTube homepage. But what I want you to see is at the top there, there's a playlist for you. You now have access to that. And uh, like Chris Barber, because you're a hardcore bandito, you get access to the classified builds, of course, and the gamer music playlists, which you can listen to online stream and listen to offline as well. You can even download them. So enjoy. So it's, the time is really close, right? Oops, not that. I accidentally switch weapons too much sometimes. Over switching is a pain point for me. It's kind of an Xbox controller thing. It's that all that Y business, you know what I mean? I think 1886 is badass, by the way. I think it's the best rifle in the game. But when I take in the legendary, nah. So again. <laughs> but I, to be honest with you, I wouldn't take most rifles in the legendary. But we'll see about that new Doctor's Home. Not a big legendary rifle kind of guy. She just fucking avoided that. Point blank. Nemesis. Oh, come on. Oh, God, what just happened? A, that's um that's a resource convoy is what I was gonna say there they have crashed the party Bossy, bossy. One shot. Close up. Nemesis. Love it. The only build you can uh, point blank snipe with and not be a PC player. <laughs> Uh, PC players are probably like, oh, I do that all day long. <laughs> I know you do. Quit bragging. Well, they didn't count that as a headshot. Hold on, bro. I'm going to charge up on you. We got two. We got two of these. Uh, oh, maybe it's just one. But the uh, God damn it! Resource convoys. Oh, and we got one of those other things coming. Damn it! the elites so we're gonna have to try to filter out who's who it's okay but as you can say plenty of riot foam right i think more than enough
damn it. Nice, right? Who's left? We need a we need a fucking boss. God, get off me, dude. Uh oh, You're beside me. There they are. This is the group. Come on. Got it. Good to seal up for him. We're close. It's a close. One shot of the boss. That's basically it, right? We got somebody alive? God damn it. It's our last guy over here. What's still? Oh, it's another name boss. What the fuck? I thought I just killed the boss. Did I not? There it is. 31-32. Exact same time between three builds. <laughs> Bucky Eye. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Or Buckeye. Sorry, it's a Bucky Eye. That's crazy, though, guys. 31, basically 45, whatever it was. The same time between all three builds. Same time. So that was a striker build. And then the other build, this build just played out as fast as that build. As fast as that build. That's insane, right? Three builds, the same speed. And this one, look at this one. Look at this one. Look at it. That's four skill tiers on the build with the memento. Two armor cores. You know? It did the same speed. <laughs> and I got to say this, guys. Way more survivability. We didn't die hard once. Right? I don't even think we went down once. That there is the one advantage, I could say. Right? And so, I would say... Uh, so, this is what's interesting. So, when it comes to survivability... It's again, I got to say, so this is the important part you need to know. Like you got to evaluate the builds. You got to define what they're going to do. Right. And for all of these, we want uh, the uh, high survivability is basically uh, and what can you do with that? You can go fast with that. Right. And why do you want to go fast? So you can get more XP, more gear. So anyways, it also the single factor that boils all builds down together, like the single element that they can all be measured by is time is my point right time is the is what makes these builds what separates these builds it's time time to heal time to kill time to clear content because that's the point of the game it's a looter shooter so the faster you can clear content then the more gear you get the more loot you get right the more xp you get the more resources you get blah 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 so clearing content the more fun you have right the more the, the more play time you're technically getting right so the more play within that time is what i mean i guess and, and so like if you're dying a lot then you got to go back to the white house a lot and blah 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 right and that's no that's no bueno or go back to your little control point we lost the sound again huh sorry about that guys i don't know what's going on i'll f fix it in a second but um
So if time is the single measuring point on all builds, or deep damage oriented builds, I gotta say, right? Because, I mean, really, time applies to everything, but clearing content quickly is the definition of all three of these builds, right? That's the promise that they deliver. They promise uh, amazing time to kill, if time to kill, and amazing survivability so that you can clear, so that you can play more aggressively and clear content quickly. So that's what they're all promising. They all deliver the same. Except this one, I, if, we, if I had to rank them in, in their survivability, it would probably be this build, then the glass cannon, then the striker build if i had to rank them and i'm ranking them based on today's gameplay just today in this test because this build we went down zero times not that i remember i don't remember dying once with this one and we definitely didn't die hard right because we would have had to restack our mementos and all that stuff so this one brings 40 percent armor on kill so and three percent armor regen none of those other ones had any of that right all the other builds had was their standard 10% armor on kill. No regen. So this has got 40% armor on kill, 3% armor regen, everything, and its status effects. And status effects are also helping you contain the enemy, control the enemy, right? Crowd control. So, and then you got two types of status effects. So, of course, this one brings the best survivability. The other one was that I got to say is the second best in survivability of the three we tested today is actually going to be this one. We went down less times with this one than the striker build. The striker build, I think we went down four times. And then I think with this one, we went down two or three times, you know? So it's not a lot more survivability between the striker build, but there were a couple of times where we killed you before they killed me situations. But does that necessarily make it a better build? No, because those were very, it was situational. You know, it was situational. And so, you know, it, what I'm saying is, like, it, it's, it's, it was how the cookie crumbled. That build maybe got better opportunities than the other build, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, I don't think this one's uh, raid-worthy unless you were good at, you're an ace at landing your shots, and you don't, you know, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't run this one in a raid. No. Um, could you? Is it possible? Yeah. But there's too many variables in there. What position are you going to run? You know? And, you know, are you going to be kiting boomer? Are you going to be, you know, I don't know. I don't know. There's too many variables. This one's, this one's pretty heroic. The build that I just showed, these were all heroic tests, right? These are all heroic tests. If we went into legendary, then we'd have different results, right? And and then if we change the legendary mission, depending on the mission, we'd have even more different results. And we could do that, right? Give me one second here. Let me just turn off that timer. Yeah, so we can do that. You know, we can go into different legendaries and whatever. But these builds, that's, you know, that's not what I was looking for, right? I'm not looking for a build that can do every type of content and have the same outcome. Uh, and neither of these builds, I guess if I was looking for, I got to say it this way. I guess if you were forced me to say which of these builds is the most versatile for all the content, I would say it would be the striker build. And that's because striker works with several different kinds of weapons, right? You can pair it up with LMGs and blah, blah, blah. Um, but this one, you know, only relies on very strong weapons, right? So 
1886, the SVD, any of the snipers, the white death, the pistol, any of the strong pistols. So this one's, and so, but I was gonna say before we get into legendary stuff, so those are different purposes, right? Like, so the, what we're looking for is the meta, and that's why I'm saying the meta doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It does not exist. And so this is not the best build in the game. It doesn't exist. This is only the best build in the game if you can, if you can, <laughs> if you can, and you might not be able to. And that's the same thing with this build. This build is only great if you can. If you and what I mean by if you can is if you can use the 1886 and not everybody can, right? And you can you can with anything with practice, and so that you can and can't thing is only you can right not you can't right now, you can later with practice. But you must be willing to put into practice. If you can't, if you don't have the time to practice, then that's reasonable, right? I get that you don't have the time to practice, or you don't want to. So it's not your meta. What's my meta, right? What's your meta? Uh, and so I think that's, I think, I guess, I guess maybe that's a good way to put it is like the meta is, is a personal thing, isn't it? And so, um, and it's possible to make a meta with a very specific purpose. Okay, what is the meta at being what is the a meta at being a legendary tank build that never dies that there can be a meta of that right there could you could test it against an all foundry or a tank one built from scratch or an infinite healer tank combo there's all sorts of things you can do there Okay, so uh, there was one test that I wanted to do and I ran out of time yesterday. So what I'm going to do is add two red cores. And so I'm going to get rid of one skill tier and one blue and see if I like that one better. I don't need a timer for this anymore. We're done with the timer today. So anyways, uh, moral, so moral of the story is going to be uh, establish your build's purpose when you're creating it and then uh, minimize your variables and test it and usually uh, and it's not going to be the same for every build but usually time is the factor so if you can put a timer on things that could be helpful I mean it just depends on what you what your again what your purpose of your build is but I find that to be a common element in a lot of builds time it's all about time. Make a little bit of room here. Go <laughs> kill him with kindness, shoot him with with like fluffy little marshmallows, Hotel Tango. It's hard to chew on, don't you guys think though? I mean, what we're talking about, is it really, do you guys feel like it's really abstract? Is that hard to chew on, like hard to buy? And so let me let me just like I could tell you guys like from my experience here's an example like I can rotate another build in and 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 it's all going to be the same we're going to do the same four control points and it's going to be about 31 minutes maybe it'll be 32 maybe it'll be 38 maybe it'll be 29 but it, those aren't enough that's not enough spread right uh what do you call that they call that um there's a statistical term statistical relevance there's not enough statistical relevant uh i think that's the word for it statistical relevance like the gap there isn't enough to ultimately say one build is better than the other because one build was a minute faster let's just say that right because one build is a minute faster doesn't make it better 
there's too many variables throughout that gameplay like actually i would say that the hunter's fury one that i just ran is better because if you guys caught on i don't know if you're paying into the pay attention to the details in two of those control points there were additional enemies that came through that slowed me down and because i had to discern who was my actual target and who were extra targets and you know so there might have been extra kills there were extra kills actually on three of those control points not think about it so i had i was killing more enemies with the hunter's furies and 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 i still pulled out the same time basically but my point is is that i can here's the big wow and it's, it's the same thing i've been saying for the last two nights okay so the big wow is this is that I can rotate in as many builds as you want that have similar similar characteristics, damage builds, in other words, right? So not a tank build, not a CC only build. Of course, those are just like different animals. But I mean, builds with damage. I could keep rotating them in and it's always gonna come down to the same 30 minutes, give or take a minute, right? And so what does that tell you? What does that tell you? It's the same thing, guys. Like builds have very little to do with it. It being like the meta, the amazing the speed runner we figured that out and when we were doing the legendary average just speed runs we would do it with two guys we would do it with four guys we do it with striker we would do it with heartbreaker we do it with skill builds we do it with the memento we would do it without the memento we would do it backwards we would do it forward we would go from we did a district union arena we did roosevelt island as fast as we did district union arena roosevelt island is longer and so on and so forth you know and what it came down to is like at the end we looked at each other in bewilderment and we said to ourselves, it doesn't fucking matter what build you run. We were speedrunning legendary with all red, um, all red striker builds, <laughs> blitzing. And we pulled off 19 minutes. Now, that's not a world record, but you got to admit that's pretty impressive, you know? And that's 19 minutes, you know? No armor, zero armor, all red striker builds out of cover so we were blitzing right we would basically run up to the enemy and kill them so fast that they'd hardly get any shots on you and you die from time to time but we had reviver hives and we just kind of muscled through it no strategy no extra weird stuff and it's just like and we did it you know and and it's not the bragging rights but the point is what we learned in the end was a, it's like and it comes down to one word skill and so that's what I'm saying. What is the constant? If I ran 10 different damage type builds, skill damage builds, all DPS builds, the quote unquote meta build, new shotgun builds, rifle builds, assault rifle builds, SMG builds, Hunter's Fury builds, it doesn't matter in the end because there's one constant there and that constant is me. I'm the constant. My time is always gonna be the same within a minute or two. Because the more, the most important thing in this game is skill, <laughs> right? And my skill is always going to be the same on the same four control points. I'm always going to have the same sort of plan of attack. I still play, you know, give or take a little bit more, a little bit less aggressive, depending on the build. It doesn't matter. But I always have a plan for that build. That build's going to have a plan, you know, sit back, play forwards, go for headshots, go for body shots. It doesn't matter. It's all going to be the same in the end. And so it's just like, so what I'm trying to tell you is like, wow, builds make a little difference in this game. And so if you think about that, be like, oh, so you can apply it to what we were talking about, the individual gear pieces. If a build makes, and it builds matter, I'm not saying they don't matter, but they don't matter as much as you think they do, right? If I can change cycle through 10 different builds and still get the same 30 minute time, I'm gonna tell you that it's not the build, it's the player. And be like, okay, and we can apply that to an every single piece. So if I can take the same build, all right, the same one here, and halfway roll everything. So go through here and cut that headshot damage to 50%, or that cut that weapon damage to 50%, cut down that weapon damage to half, cut down that weapon damage to half, and do that, I'll still get the same time. Right? Because it's not the build, it's the player. I am going to have to put out a few extra shots. Of course, I am going to, um, you know, pick up an extra trophy or run a little bit faster so I can keep my stacks at their highest peaks, of course. But 
what we're talking about is the the difference between like maybe 30 seconds or a minute or maybe even two minutes so after four control points maybe cutting down my damage off of this build slows me down by a minute or two negligible difference negligible that's not a real impact right it's not a real impact it's so they're like so you know and so we that's important to know because it is important to know because we bust our backs farming in this game and you know i'm gonna go turn on the timer just for whatever because i am running a test but it, it doesn't matter anymore but um we bust our backs for god rolled gear and we we sit there and we farm and we're like god i'm lo really looking for that chest piece and i need it to have perfect rolls and i got one that's okay or maybe it's even missing a roll maybe it's missing a crit damage on it but it's got headshot damage and crit chance and you're like oh i gotta keep farming i gotta and you're spending days looking for this one that's got crit damage and crit chance and you need it to be god rolled and you don't you don't now that's what i call about the drinking the kool-aid thing like i drunk the kool-aid too you know what i mean so i'm i'm i even though i know that i, I still farm for god world gear i know <laughs> i'm psycho like that you know what i mean and so so i do it anyways anyway it's a vanity it's the vanity oops it's a vanity thing, you know? It's it funny, huh? So what I did is I, I put on two weapon damage cores here. Two more than usual. And so I want to see how that... Ooh. You. Oh. It's not making it... So the only thing that's really going to... Because once you have everything proc, it's not going to matter, those extra cores. But when you don't have things proc, I'm trying to see if it's going to make things easier. Like when we don't have, but if that grenade lands. I'm gonna be mad. I want you to know that. Okay, dude. Lucky. <laughs> so what I'm looking for is extra survivability out of more damage, because that's the popular belief, right? But on more damage, faster time to kill more survivability is that true in all cases no and i just heard somebody make that argument uh today and there's so many exceptions to that rule is it is it a is it a bad philosophy no it makes sense for some builds but it's not a constant so some people say the more damage the more survivability false sometimes right you got to have sometimes in there because if i'm already one shotting everybody if i got uh if i'm hitting that before i was hitting that like uh fucking guy 40 million that's what the build was hitting at 40 million right and if i start hitting at 45 million is that adding any more survivability and if if the answer is no why not and that's because the end, there's no enemy that can take 45 million in damage in heroic. That enemy doesn't exist. So more damage is in on this build is waste. Don't you fucking jump. He did. Oh, I'm missing everything. There we go. So I'll wait to go to another control point once we have all the trophies to see if it's going to make a difference to having two more red cores. But it might not. You're either one shot in things or you're not. You know? But. The other one was peaking out, and I can't remember exactly now because I've been running variations, but as high as 40 million, it was like 38 million, 40 million on crit, and it's not a crit build, but as high as 40 million. So, but if no enemy could take that damage, I don't need it. And so that's why I decided the skill tiers were better off as skill tiers. 
So are we one shot in elites or not? So the, if the rifle it hits at uh, like looks like 16 uh, million, but the the nemesis is gonna hit at a crazy high number, right? But what's gonna change is how much riot foam we have. Everything else is gonna stay the same. How much bonus armor? How much riot foam? And also our perks and um, skill efficiency. And so. If we remove those things for two weapon damage cores that aren't impacting the build, that aren't adding extra one-shot kill capability, then we're taking away survivability, self-sustainable survivability, for no reason. We're actually taking away survivability all the way around, right? That's just what it comes out to. There's no other way to describe it. You just lost survivability. You gained nothing. You gained a vanity stat. We still got a good, uh, good amount of rifle foam, though. So you can have a little bit of every, too much of anything, right? So let's see. Can we one shot with the rifle? Let's see. Nope. Two shots, three shots. So we're at full trophies, and we still need two shots on the boss with the rifle. Now we need to check that, uh, the same thing again, also with um, the nemesis. So the real test is the nemesis. Can we two shot? Is it going to be two shots in the boss at the nemesis or one? And then do we care is going to be the next part of that question, right? Ooh. And the answer is usually no, but I just wanted to be sure by checking this variation. But the question, the answer is, does it matter if it takes you two shots to kill the boss or one? And it doesn't. What matters are the rest of the enemies, right? You got 48 other enemies you got to deal with. What's up, Doc Knight? Good to see you back. So, okay, so let's go back to conditions, right? So now there's conditions, right? And so we're talking about can there be a meta, you know, and there can't. Because one of the things is that they're conditional. So the other build, the glass cannon build, can only be the meta if you have the experience to run glass cannon and even then it may not be the it's not the meta in reality but you understand like it's there is a condition to this build and it is do you know the game well enough to be able to run glass cannon some of you yes some of you know and so what i know is my control points and i know my plan of attack i got a routine i always sneak up there and crawl around the corner and hang out in the back and so that because i know that if i have to start the fight way over there and make my way a way over here i'm going to take a shit ton of damage trying to navigate or i jump over that you know either way you know and that's uh we cleared out in seven minutes by the way so adding two more red cores didn't increase my time to clear that control point think about that but th is this one the meta is this build the meta no why it's conditional what are those conditions headshots only right headshots only now striker if the, if you made me choose between the three which one ha can be the meta it would have to be striker why it's more suitable to the most amount of players right it doesn't need the experience you know the added experience to perform a glass cannon and blah 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 you know and maybe some of you pick up glass cannon and you can adapt to it pretty quickly and if so you know right on right on But Grumpy makes a joke like do a 511 gear one and that's exactly my point like I mean, we, we talked about we wanted to do that kind of stuff and um, We can do that like I'm down. I do challenge builds. We've done it. We have not on this timer So we'd have to start the timer uh, version, but 
What I mean is like we ran those like uh, no uh, you can only use uh, Gear so it's still two shots on an elite. So I'm not gaining anything from this build so far um, We did this builds like where we say you can only use gear that's dropped you can only use gear that you can buy from a, uh, a, a vendor and then uh, and then you have to and then we you're forced into changing so that's just a challenge build right and we've and they're, they're very possible do they make the game a little bit harder sure at, at first depends depends on the challenge but um but we've talked about that because we believe it doesn't matter i believe it doesn't matter and i think some of you guys are with me but we've talked about that we were like well fuck let's let's do a legendary with all yellow with all purples you know <laughs> And I bet you we could get to basically the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. And the reality is it shouldn't because besides the weapons, um, uh, well, purples are just mostly less armor, so. Ah. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, so I could tell, but I could tell you right away that this one isn't providing any extra benefit. It's it's working great, but maybe it might be cutting out a shot uh, here and there. But I think that there's only two shots that really matter. And one is the boss kill and the opening shot. And my opening shot took basically two rounds. And so two bullets, and which is not a problem for me. It's fine. But it's not worth losing armor and um, bonus armor, which would that also comes with that, and skill efficiency for that. See, that boss is still taking multiple shots. So still two shots with that, and I'm okay with that. But I, I'd still wanted to explore and whether I can cut that down. And that is the trade-off. Like, some bosses will be able to take out with one for sure if we have the right procs. But notice my... Hunter's Fury isn't full proc And part of that's because we cut out our armor and so which slows me down a little bit and I, Those Hunter's Fury stacks only last 10 seconds Why is it not take my right from click I click into the right phone sometimes it doesn't switch. 20 minutes. So two shots. So he was faster, I think. I think without... Because still, my Hunter's Fury isn't charged up. And I think when I'm running more armor cores, it takes... Probably twice. Sometimes up to four shots on him. It depends on how charged up I am. But anywhere from two to four shots. So... There are, so there are benefits, of course, of running two extra armor cores. Or, or damage cores. But... I don't know. I might leave that for you guys to just figure out in the end how it go with what you what you want. And the reality is I'll be able to make any of them work, of course. So but having that extra defense uh, what saves me from these crunches, right? Like just like when you got five guys around you. It also allows you to run uh, across the field more. And ultimately, I, I want to be playing without a shield, so that is important to me. Oh my god, you lucky bastard. Oh, really? That means you're going to get the right phone, buddy. Congratulations. Congratulations.
killed him with the rifle. You see that? Dumb. Okay, if you're gonna play around, you don't get time for that, right? That's what the right film is for. It's just like, let's just cut out the BS. Batmo bike! What's up, Batty? What's good with you, man? Hey, there's a guy, there's a guy in your clan, Batmo bike, that I saw. That, do you play with uh, Freedom something or other? Do you play with him, Batman? Batmo bike? Freedom something. I forget his name now, but I gotta look it up in a second. I'm interested in hooking up with this guy. He's in the t he's in your Tux clan. Hey, I've been checking out the builds that he's running, and I like his selections. And uh, also, I've been working on my headshot ranks, and I noticed he's ahead of me in rank. I'm catching up to him, but I was like, wow, this guy, he's got to have, I mean, I'm curious in his play style. Like, I want to play with him. I was like, I wonder if he's my doppelganger <laughs> or my nemesis. Dubster. <laughs> That's not a bad one, huh? Freedom Brigade. Thanks, Reaper. Good memory. That's what I have you guys for. My bad memory. Um, do you know that guy, Batmo Bike? Freedom Brigade? Anyways, he might have reached... He might have responded to my friend request by now. I just sent it out yesterday, but... But if he likes to do legendaries or whatever, I don't know his style, but you know, he might be one that might want to roll with us on our upcoming runs. We're looking for um, more players to come kick it with us on those. Cause I'm sh pretty sure we're going to be doing them a lot. <laughs> it's not going to be a one and done dealio. And, and of course everybody's welcome, but what I notice about like what appeals to me about guys like him and I don't know him at all and you know but is that I uh, when I peeked at his build so I came across him because let me just show everybody real quick and uh, so I came across his name curi curiously because um, I've been tracking my headshot kills right so let's go in here go to me and I'm now at 88 which is awesome so and then I was, as I was looking, I was like, okay, where do I want to be? And of course, you know, top 50, top 15 or whatever. And then I came across him, Freedom of Grain. I'm like, look at that Tux Clan guy up, way up here, way up here. This guy's killing it. And then I went to go inspect the player and then I was checking out his builds. And it, it, this is the Regen Rockstar build, which I love. And then the other day he was running another really good build, which is the Slaughter build 2.0. And it had me. Th what I like about that, what I what, so what's what like struck a chord is that he's got builds. He's got some really interesting builds. He's got some of these builds that uh, can demonstrate well in legendary. And it's really nice when you play with people that have several of different builds and be like, hey, can you run this? And then they flip to it real quick. And they're like, yeah, yeah cool, I got that. And they can build it real fast. Or like, hey, could you got a, do you got an eclipse build? Hey, do you got a Vanguard tank build? Hey, do you got do you got game over? Do you got slaughter? Do you got you know? And then like it makes it uh, really cool to have that div that diversity on your teams, you know, just like raid stuff kind of. But also for, for showcasing something, some sort of point we're making, you know, because sometimes you do that, right? Like, let's make a point. Let's see if the memento can be good. Or let's let's see if uh, we can run this mission without a healer and or only skill builds or whatever.
and maybe he doesn't have that stuff but i like that i like that when people have lots of different builds and they're Their stash, this is especially some of our hybrids because they're pretty cool to use for that legendary. I just right from you. Why can't I see you? Oh, God. Where'd you come from? still you hey yo Still, need that head. Come on, switch weapons. God damn it. Hold still. Oh, lost it. God damn it. Okay, Nemesis. Yeah, one shot. Just uh -oh. cut down on a shot. All right. There's one of those times that could be very nice to have a ride from. <laughs> Out in the open. Ah, kill their fuck. There's one of those times where the ride from doesn't do anything. There's one of those times this extra red cores don't do anything either. God. Let's reset, reset. I could do it with the rifle probably, but that's just more fun.
That was a good little little demonstration. This is gonna be the faster of the builds. Cause I could tell already. Um But is it significant enough for me to care? <laughs> Sorry I had a bad experience, I dropped shots. Are you on PC, PlayStation? What are you? Drop shots. You can't be any geek off the street. Gotta be handy with the steel if you know what I mean. You can't be any geek updates. off the street. Give me a second there. Okay, I gotta go quickly on this one because it's our last control point. So we need to, it's gonna, but as you can see, it's gonna pace out to be the same, right? <laughs> Either way, I mean, I did, there was a one where I was doing some extra talking, but like, you know what I mean? Either way, you know, I took two, I added 30%. This has got 30% more damage than any of the others. Think about that. Remember? We talked about that. So the, look at think about it from a perspective of quantity and damage. This has got 30% more damage. Oh god. She was that landed right on her and for some reason didn't take. Somebody behind us, huh? Sneaky sneaky, I didn't see you. No idea. We don't need to kill that guy. Screw you, dude. Best time to kill in my my book. Ha <laughs> ha. Isn't that kill? Isn't that kill? Isn't that weird that it's never taken into consideration? People talk about best time to kill builds, and this, these uh, these builds are never brought into it. Is one shot, one kill not not part of that conversation? The guy back here somewhere. Right phone. You. Apparently, that was not a headshot. Oh, uh, don't do that. Okay, good. He's backing off. That was close. It's because I duffed that shot. Here we go. There he is. What? You hold still. You eat that. You're messing up in time, bro. Oh, who are you? Fuck you. I'm out of here. I don't want to deal with you. Not worth my time and your axe. Trying to fight me with an axe. You couldn't pick up a weapon from one of the dead bodies from all the guys that are, I'm killing? Uh, what? <laughs> like my, my, my uh, stack disappeared and I don't know where it went. Because it didn't hit her. She saw it all her life.
Three quick kills, huh? I'll take them. Come on, come on, come on. Hello. Splendid. 30 minutes and 40 seconds. Well, is there somebody alive? <laughs> there is apparently. Damn it. I'm calling it 30. I'm calling it 30, 40. Who are you guys shooting at? I don't see. Don't you go anywhere. Come on. Ah. Oh. No. Oh, this one. There it is. <laughs> 3122, still a little bit faster. And rogues. But yeah, so so what I was saying earlier what I was saying earlier is I added, look at, think about it from this perspective. I just added 30%. God damn, he tickled at my position for me. I had a 30% weapon damage to this build. 30%, not counting the extra memento stacks, right? And it didn't, it didn't help me clear content much quicker. It's basically the same, you know, by about a minute, but oh, I should have taken a shot. But I, but I'm not speed running, so who cares, right? I mean, I'm not trying to break a world record. I'm just trying to evaluate which build is better, which one gives me more survivability, which one, whatever. You know what I mean? And so, it's all it's all being equal. There it is. I mean, it does bring more survivability. It does a little bit more, right? Because I made that was probably it took me two shots to take out that rogue. Maybe it would have taken one. Uh, maybe it would have taken one more if I had my skill tier, my armor back, whatever. But the other one's more enjoyable, a little bit more, you know, with the armor core here and then the uh, skill tier there. Still tough position. Look, and I got, I still got skill haste here, so we're not fully powered up. They all work, right? They all work. They all do the same thing. 32 minutes. You know, I just... That's also what makes it hard to determine which one of these builds is, is, is my fave, you know? And so, I mean, and again, you know, maybe that leaks over uh, when you're creating your builds and you think, uh, helping you think through it, whatever build you're running. But that's how I think about it. Like, okay, did it add? What did it add? What did it take away? Well, if the ultimate, if it's, it's really hard to, t it's really hard to tell when you're going through build iterations, right? Because you're making small movements. Oh, do I want an extra damage co core or not? But it sort of goes back to the, let's, let me bring it back to the main point. Well, people always say, well, the more damage the better because time to kill is survivor the best is your survivability right the best offense is a best de is a better defense false <laughs> false i was still one shot one killing it didn't matter it didn't matter that didn't change that right and then if you look at uh, take it down to the micro level there were a couple of times where i didn't have to put out as many shots but then you have to digest that and say, well, did that, what did that do for me? Did it, did I survive more because of that? No, I survived the same on all the builds. I didn't die in any of the builds, right? None of the versions I died. So I got the same survivability, all the versions I didn't die. Well, 
since you have more power since you have more time to kill and you still got the 40 percent since you got more power you you're able to kill faster which means you're able to play faster right no same time i mean the truth is it was faster but by by seconds i was able to complete oh i probably don't want to i want to donate that um i was able to complete for the same four control points seconds faster seconds do i care about second no no did it and we already we already walked through did it bring more survivability no <laughs> it didn't right it didn't i didn't never died so what survivability did it add it didn't you know so that's so it does make it tough for eva evaluations between version a and version b but um you know, you can make it easy on yourself and just say it doesn't matter which one you like better. And that's when you go for it. <laughs> and for me, I do like never running out of right foam. That's pretty cool. And I like having more bonus armor so that I can play a little bit more out of cover. What up jeffrey adams hey reaper um tony's got a question you might have this answer i don't have it memorized but i've heard once but i don't remember it how much armor do you how much additional armor do you get if you're at level 20 on a 1.7 million armor build well it's, it's sort of going to be a variable that 1.7 million armor condition is a variable isn't it because well if you're running the memento or if you're running the gila whatever that's going to push that number up and so technically there's like three variables four variables if you're running the foundry it's gonna be a little bit different i get that the, you're saying 1.7 million armor that's a regular blue build all six skill tiers like on a grupo whatever all six uh, armor cores on a on a, a standard setup is what you're asking Um, you could just, can you just take your, uh, your armor and add 20% E? So there's 80% right there. I got 80,000 armor. And so that's going to push it to, uh, basically a hundred, right? Times 20%. It's going to give me 16,000. It's not quite a hundred. So that'll be 96,000 right there. So if we did 96,000 times six equals, no, because there's other armor on top of that. It's not that easy. Bama's heels back. Okay, let me turn off this little timer. So yeah, so I go, so I myself struggle when, when, when I know, when I, when you know, you know, uh, and you're testing out and you're fine tuning to build. I myself struggle, right? I'm like, oh, which one do I want to stick with? You know. Fourteen point eight. This one was that too. I'm still looking for the perfect striker backpack. I need max crit and can crit damage and stuff like that on these. So I can roll possible armor on him. Upcoming for the upcoming stuff.
Yeah, that's what he was asking. You have to multiply the base armor on each piece. So he's asking for the figure, but yeah, that's right, Reaper. So... Yeah, the base armor and like of each individual piece and then stat add it on top of the... Yeah, so you have to go through each piece. Is that what you tried to say there, Firebird TV? Base is 726. That's the total base, though. I think, don't you have to add each individual base? Is it, that, is it the same math? 145,000 difference is crap I'll, either way. Can't be much more than that, right? <laughs> it's not worth it. Whatever it is, that better be the only build you run ever. <laughs> The only gear pieces that I'm just so you know that I'm I'm working is basically the memento, but I did uh, do some on on my coyotes mask just because it's like yeah that one I've run a lot <laughs> I guess but there's no point in it there was no point in it it's not really adding again it's mostly because the armor doesn't armor doesn't really help you in this game right it's the how fast you recover on that armor. Grumpy sums it up saying, yeah, all six pieces of 20 million will give you basically one blue core. The problem isn't that isn't so much how much armor you'd be like, OK, well, one blue core is nice. If you think about it that way, that's nice. Sounds nice. The problem is like, yeah, but are you going to run that build every day? Because you just spent a shitload of money to do that. You know, that's the problem with it. It's not necessary how much I mean. Now, if it gave you a ton of armor, you'd be like, yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> you know because they're like yeah it jumps you to like three million armor doubles your armor like come on what they're gonna give us this weak ass little armor thing and say like what uh let's see let's see uh first i'll do the progressions and then i think it might be Do we drop? So we're at 88. So I need uh, 194. That's easy. It's easy. Okay. So, but I think I can start varying up the build. I think I've seen what I need to see here. So I just need to make a decision. That's all. That's where I'm at. Just make a decision. And I'm thinking the extra, uh, one extra skill tier or one armor core, not two reds. I don't know. So the armor core is a debating point for me. So I like the bonus armor. I like the bonus armor. But the yellow cores are technically a defense, right? The yellow cores are technically a defense here. So I'm thinking like, okay, so do, do I, and I, and I have the 40% armor on kill and I got the 3% armor regen. I got the status effects and the status effects. That's all defense. That's yellow and blue on the build, right? And so, but is one red core changing the way the build plays? Mm, we haven't actually tested this combo yet. <laughs> I know, I know. We did test the, the, the four red uh, with two blues. We did test that. Let me just do one more control point or two with this one. I know I got to test. Yeah, yeah, Re Reaper. Reaper is making a really good point, Tony, that he's uh, They've narrowed it into only basically weapons and skills to level 20 and probably even furthermore, 
their favorites, right? You got to go start with your favorites. Skills around uh, probably all of all across are probably worth it, right? Because you're gonna, we, we, except for your stupid skills like your healing traps, don't upgrade those. <laughs> But, I don't know, does anybody love those? But a lot of these skills we use, like, we use every shield. Um, three out of four drones, four out of five drones we use. Some of the bombardier is rare. But I think eventually you will probably want to try to get every skill upgraded, except for one or two. I really hope they give us more skills. <laughs> That's what I'm yearning for. I yearn for more skills. Yeah, Firebird. I, w I just don't have that great chess piece. But I thought about that too. There, here's the downside. Like, I think you're right. Like, I'm, I'm kind of torn about it. I'm kind of torn about the Raldi chess piece because uh, it is technically a rifle build. So it is an 1886 build. But um, I'm going to have this one's got armor regen, but it's not going to. But I, but to your point, what you've realized is like, but you're using the nemesis to charge up. That's a good point. And so that's where I'm torn on it, you know? And so that's an extra 10%, 15, 10, five, extra five. <laughs> and that could make the difference. It could. Uh, and maybe that's the right choice because if I'm loading up, yeah, let's give that one a whirl. I've been wanting to try that and you just reminded me. So I'm losing a little bit of weapon handling, so we'll just have to put that aside for a second. And yeah, otherwise we're good. So that's gonna give my nemesis more power. So when I'm charging up, maybe I eliminate an extra shot. Yeah, Blue Rosebud's just saying the 5% is universal though. Like, so when I go to the rifle, then, but if I am charging up with the nemesis, and what the thing is, is like, once you get the rifle, buffed it doesn't matter it, it, it's 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 taking them all you know it's it's one shot in everything and so logically like the mechanics of how i'm playing I, and i thought about that too it does make sense to do the araldi because well you're using touch you're using the nemesis to charge up so you would want that to be the strongest because once you have headhunter it doesn't matter that five percent weapon damage doesn't matter anymore which is true only on the no, the non-elite so it would be those non-elites if like I, if i'm not able to one shot non-elites anymore with with straight out with the rifle then you know then we lot that five percent damage made a difference make sure nobody tries to flank me right they like to do that so let's see what that does here so let's see if we can get him to two we should Is that it? Yeah, that was a headshot. So we're still not full, which that'd be high expectations if it was. See that guy hiding back there? I hate when they do that. That's a sneaky little spot. So I think it did. I think that did just check. See, we're full now, two kills. With no stacks, right? No Hunter's Fury stacks, no backpack stacks. So. See, because once we're to the rifle, then we're, it doesn't matter anymore, right? Like, we switch back, we're one killing anything, everything now anyways, right? Oh, fuck. I didn't see him right in front of me. Fuck. Jump. Jump, 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 jump. No, 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 no. Don't go back. God damn it. God damn it. It's a clusterfuck. I right from myself. Because we were on a kill streak right there, so that was nice. Oh, of course. Course. Okay, let's start that over. I panicked.
Yeah, I did attack 52. I, I, I need to do more. I'm just doing this weird thing. I will be doing more. I'm just doing this weird thing of... Uh, uh, let me reset this. Where I'm trying to... Um, get my resources as high naturally as possible just just to see because i'm not in any hurry to upgrade anything anything so but i got 104 exotic components and these are all natural drops you know just from playing the game random exotic drops i crush it that kind of thing so um and so you know so this isn't growing very fast and that's sort of my point i want to see like okay let's naturally play like everybody else does you know uh, how many exotics will i get and then I got that fear of what do you call it? Buyer hesitation, <laughs> fear, uh, buyer, fear of buyer remorse kind of thing. So what I mean is like, ooh, it's so expensive to take one thing. To, I'm not even to level 20 yet. So I'm only a level 11, almost to 12. So but even then, like I haven't even gotten all my gear to level 10 or 11. Like like, ooh, re because re even the, your basic of resources are really valuable to me, probably more than you. Because I I uh, I create so many builds like electronics are really valuable to me. So one shot. Oh, what was that? Not a headshot. God damn it. God. These guys, huh? All right, let's try that again. So yeah, so this is easier with the TAC-50. So if you decide to go sharpshooter, this is actually an easier to uh, point blank with the um, the sharpshooter is so easy. It's just that the only downside about it is that there's a the little lag from switching to your specialization weapon is annoying. And even if you turn off your uh, animation, which I'm pretty sure I have, it's still slow. I'll get you killed. Hold up there. I've been meaning to kill you. Reinforcements in place. Oh, we need that guy, don't we? Oh, that felt like that was on. I'm not running sharpshooter, so there's a little bit of a a wave. Feels like you. It feels like you're on a boat sometimes. You're shooting your sniper. He's not gonna let me do it, is he? <laughs> Forget it. Let's get in there. The build was designed to do. in the headshot fuck hold on I'm gonna get my headshot on you buddy don't move stay right there here bossy bossy oh there's a shitload of them out here that grenade Convoy just came in. Okay, let's do rifle. Sniper. Is it going to be one shot or two? Oh, really? Almost two, huh? But we don't have all the trophies, so that's 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 good. That's good. So it did matter. That's the test shot right there. And so I, we're just shy of being full trophies, so I think that it'll be a one-shot kill on him. He was almost dead. That's the test shot, so... I wonder, um, 
If I can add back on an armor core, though, I want to. Back, back. See you, boss. Oh, that felt right on. Look at that. Yeah, so we're almost halfway with our trophies. Stack up. Oh, fuck that up. That'll get you killed. So be careful. <laughs> be careful. And it's because, like, it's it, it won't get you killed with the rifle, but the nemesis doesn't have um, preservation, right? So when you take that damage, it's not going to come right back. You'll still get 20% armor kill, so there's that. So you're not completely lost. So I lost my buff. Stack. So sometimes I switch to my, my sniper so fast, like the stacks don't come. It's just sitting there staring at him. Got a convoy in here somewhere too, huh? glitch so the glitch is the right from stole my kill got it back though no! fucking right from fuck you guy Almost had that. More right from fucking right from us. Jesus Christ. I mean, what do you do against three right fromers, right? Try not to suck. That's what you do. God damn, huh? Look at it like they're ignoring my uh, decoy. That that heavy gunner ignores the decoy. Eighteen eighty six is a badass weapon. Though, I gotta say. Use my test shot, but I didn't have time. Switch. Oh, I don't have any? Fuck. Oh, you jerk. Unbelievable to me. Fuck.
fuck. It's me being impatient. Oh, I want you. Oh my God, impossible. Fuck it, I'm just getting mad. Just getting mad, just gonna kill him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, jerk. Okay, because I missed my test shot. So the test shot was uh, on the boss. Was it gonna be one or two? And it's really close to being one. Um, yeah, I've been looking for this chess piece too. This a better version of it. I want it with weapon handling and. Headshot damage already on it. I want both. And this one's got armor regen. It's not the worst, but that little bit of weapon handling, you know, it helps with the little the reloads and you know, a couple of times it might save your life. Maybe it won't. Man, land a shot that you would have otherwise missed. Let's try it right here. Hopefully we get a good boss line up. Anybody gone out to New York lately? <laughs> Man, I do not play New York. I do not like it. I don't like any of the missions. I mean, there's like one mission out there that I like, and it's Wall Street. And I don't like the enemies that you fight in there, but I like the layout of it, and it's pretty unique. But the missions suck. But they're not going to change that, are they? No way. I think that's stuck. Those guys up there. <laughs> Taking out everything with that little rifle, huh? It's, it's got a nice rhythm to it. Stability is not as bad as you would think it is, would be. It returns to center. And so it's just about patience, letting it drop. I don't want to kill that helmet guy. I don't want to shoot that helmet guy. You know what I mean? Like, if you rush a shot too much, you're not, you're going to regret it. So it's like, let it return to center. Finally. Fuck. Try to get this guy. He's going to be the end of me, too. That red guy in the back there. There he is. We had no bad fill up an armor real fast, right? We had zero armor there. All came back. Shit. I didn't see them behind me.
Okay, I wanna I wanna save that boss, so let's What kind of boss is it? Okay, it's a good boss. Kind of an easy one though. Let me clear this guy. Okay, so load up. So technically we're full. Should be able to do this easily. Yep, 24 million. It's plenty strong, right? Look, so I'm looking at the number more than the kill. So of course we killed her one shot, but the number is more important because the boss is a variable. You know what I mean? You get tankier. So there's a guy that you know, the one with the helmet, the big tanky machine gunner boss, like he or the grenadier. Oh really? Those might be, those might not be as easy, but the medic boss, like I would like to, there's a medic boss, like I'd be able to, I'd like to be able to take him out. And then the average grunt boss, like that one I'd like to be able to take out. But there's two bosses that you're not gonna be able to one shot, right? One is the, the grenadier boss, and then the other one is the heavy gunner boss. Those guys are always going to be require multiple shots. They're protected. It's their helmets. Look how far he's going. Just... Fuck. Crushing my skill. That was not a headshot. Fuck. Frustrates me. It's because I was trying to do too many things at once. You know? Okay, there's a right phone boss. There's a good boss here. So let's let him come on in. And then let's pick off his homies. God, they're shooting at him, so it's making it harder. Fucking. That's 20 million shots, so we're full, for sure. That boss should go down in one. The problem is they're fucking shooting at him. There we go. 22. You know what I mean? You see him jiggling like that? That's my... The little NPC shooting at him, making him jiggle. No good, good for nothing NPC. So yeah, this does a job. Um, it cuts down a boss, a bullet on a boss, basically. One shot in the boss. Almost consistently. And that'll just vary a little bit on the boss, but otherwise it's pretty consistent. It's kind of a nice spotter, huh? I don't think I like it because it's too fixed, but. No, it's uh, Firebird. That's a really good question. Um, it's actually it's it's a visual glitch on the on the on the uh, talent. It doesn't always show up. So he's talking about how, like, uh, sometimes I, I'm running around with uh, Headhunter, 
proct and I'm one shotting everybody, but there's no icon below. And it's frustrating for me too because um it's frustrating for me too because I I like sometimes I'll f I don't know if I have it. I was like, did I is that did I lose it? Accidentally land a body shot and, and it and it is active. And so I'll end up having to whip out my TAC fifty or my nemesis and, and get a headshot with that just in case. You know what I mean? Before I get back out of cover. So Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm too, I'm doing fine. I'm down to final tweaks here. So blue rose. I, I'm not sure if yesterday I was one shotting the boss. Sometimes I was. I was. It was. There was. It was. It was a little bit more circumstantial. I guess I would say yesterday. You know. And so I'm I'm trying to improve the consistency on that, but I don't want to lose all the benefits of the build. But we ran it three different ways today, and we basically. Uh, dropped it down to three skill tiers. We ran it the original way. We dropped it down to three skill tiers, and then we ran it this way. Now, they all perform ultimately really close to each other. The survivability, they're all the same. You know, it's just like, do you want more armor or not? But um, I think I am going to put with the... I think the right move is probably just to run the Araldi chest, put back on the armor core, and be okay with having to two-shot the bosses sometime. Sometimes. The armor core is now the only thing in question. And I would still like a better chest piece. I want one weapon handling core here. Mm, I'll get rid of that. I don't like spotter that much. Otherwise, I think I'm done with this build, basically. I was just down to that one thing. And I, 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 we've done all the tests. It's just going to come down to pick one, choose it, stick with it. Let's delete this stuff that I don't need real quick. And then we'll get rolling on something new. You guys down for something new? I've been running this for three, three full days. So I'm sure you are. Cool, 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 cool. So we have seen a lot of builds today. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't my, I don't want to focus the striker. I could have fun more, more fun with striker, but I don't want to do that right now, just because it's all gonna fucking change in like a week. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to do anything with striker right now. You know, somebody will always point out, but it's changed, and it's true. It's true. So uh, let's save this. Cheat code build is what I'm calling that. I think that's a good name for it. It feels like a cheat code. What's our map look like? Do I have a Raldi? I would love to find a better Raldi. No. And I do. Ha I might have that one. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Um, that just needs to be optimized. Yeah, there it is. So I can make this one into it. So like, see, it's got the right stats, weapon handling. I just need to, I wouldn't just need to optimize it. Right. Um, yeah, I should just move that over switch it and just spend the resources it'll just be faster than farming for this right <laughs> sucks and that's why i need all my resources because i have to make dumb decisions like that but what did i tell you about this is that psycho mode this is the drink of the cooler mode this is where i'm psycho man like 
well, I just got done telling you guys earlier, you don't need God rolled stats, but I'm going to spend valuable resources on God rolling it because I have to, you know? Because I'm a psycho. I'm, oops, that's where I wanted to be. And it's going to make me go. I don't even know if I have enough uh, SHD stuff. Let me see. I don't. So I'll do it later because I'm going to I'd like to plug those from another character. So cool, cool, cool. So we got the we got the setup. And so for me, I just got to figure out if I'm going to run that. Well, I'm probably going to run that armor core, but that's the only thing in contention right now is the two armor cores. So and I think it's going to come down to how how much of a crack shot you are. If you're not a crack shot, roll with the extra armor. Despite what popular belief is, right? That's opposite of what other people say. They say, oh, well, no, more damage. More damage is survivability. But you're one-shotting everything. <laughs> you're already one-shot anything. So the only thing that comes out is the first shot, uh, first shot of the game, first shot of the control point, or on the boss. That's the only thing this armor core is going to affect. Otherwise, you're one-shotting everything. Okay, time to switch gears. Time to switch gears. Let's do that. Probably want to see uh, this urban MDR is kind of cool, huh? Anybody like the urban MDR? Oh, we want to crush that. So what are the goodies that we picked up in our bag? Uh, Chatterbox, Kingbreaker. I've been meaning to make a tsunami build too. Tsunami is kind of cool. What do you guys think about the tsunami? Some of me thinks it's not worth it. The pummel, perfect pummel on that gun, just because the reload isn't that bad. But I mean, I'll take a free load reload on any weapon, though, right? <laughs> so there's that. No, I think the MDR is crit damage. Because what the MDR is. Yeah, it's crit damage. Um, let me see. If we put the foxes with it, obviously, because I think that would be the best place for it. Best piece for it. The best slot. Let's see. Crits, foxes. With lucky shot, I don't know if it's gonna be strong enough. That's pretty low base damage there. I mean, yikes, right? I mean, obviously it's an RPM thing, but still, I mean, we're going from 650 to 185. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I think uh, inside here, headshot damage 140. But the thing is, I got, I still got headshot damage rolled everywhere. So that, that let me roll those off first, and then we'll take a look at it. Let me just put on whatever build. Let's put on our something that just with crits all over it would be good. There we go. Let's see where we're at. Hundred is higher. It is higher. Oh, we got a little bit there though. But still, I think it is a little bit higher. But uh, not the punch drunk. I don't have anything else here. Come on. <laughs> God damn it. All right. Let's put a group of backpack and a coyote mask. 80. I think that's the same, isn't it? 80. Because if I look at the, if I put on the FAMAS, 75. Oh, that's a little bit higher. Look at that. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, because there's nothing on there. It says more headshot damage. That's sneaky. Just a little bit, but it's more. Huh. Good one, Blue Rose. Because we're going to need that extra 5%, aren't we? Do we like a rate of fire? Do we like... Uh, you know, I do like this weapon with uh, fast hands, actually. Um... 
not fast hands. Uh, sorry, I meant steady hands. I always do that with that talent. I always say the other one. Um, let's see, rifles. So I, I picked. I do have one with damage to targets out of cover already on it, but I picked up this one because it had rate of fire, and I was kind of interested to that. Interested in that. Can that make it feel cooler, or does it suck? And so I, I kept this one on purpose with that. Um, that is, does that allow us to play close and personal with it? Um, like, I don't know. It's not fast. I don't think it's fast enough to stack, you know, to do some serious stacking. I have a hard time with four, even 400, 450 RPM weapons to stack, like with strikers. So, but I'm curious to see if I can play on the inside with this thing. Let's try that real quick. Let me just put that one on. within reason like we got to find that range like you don't want to play with an assault rifle because then you're just gonna go well why don't you just use an assault rifle and i'll be like right <laughs> you know right totally you know um but 20 in a mag is interesting too like do i need the extra 20 rounds on a rifle no let me put it there instead let me see here What if I took away some optimal range because we're playing the inside? Now, look at our stability. It looks nice, right? We're we'll going to put that to crit chance. Uh, we're just toying around, so, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, I know. Those missions, I know it's, like, I want I to switch it up, too. It's just, I really hate those missions, like, with a passion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, except for Wall Street. Like, I don't have the Reforcer Brooks, but I'm jealous of everybody that does. I wish I had it. I'm jealous of everybody that has the Enforcer. Because uh, the Super 90 was one of my favorites. So let me think of what chest I want to run with this. So like this makes it definitely those knees are staying. Uh, if we're going to pick up 30% weapon damage there, we're going to be good. If we're playing inside, pick up a spike of uh, crit damage isn't bad either. I don't know if that's what I want to do, but... What I imagine doing is dr uh, drilling an enemy in the forehead with the rifle, right? And so that's sort of what I want to do. So I don't, I'm not trying to one-shot, one kill, but, like, um, let's just see what I, with how it's set up right now, how many shots it takes. And that would kind of just give me an idea of what I need for power. So I, I imagine kind of, like, coming in close, like, literally this close, just be like, wham, wham, wham. You know, and so I would like that to be like not a hundred shots, right? But if you're landing all your shots, you know, if you got a high, a great stability accuracy thing going, and you got the RPMs, you know, that could be pretty cool, right? Just bup, 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 bup. like, I mean, those are 1.1s, so that's strong. And the good news is, like, you also have the, some sort of range with that. So you can carry the close and personal to distance. But in order to play inside, you want that to hit hard. And you want it to be accurate. So... chest talent right that's what i'm thinking about here i mean spotters it's not that exciting to me i don't know i know it's 20 percent amp damage but like uh, focus is strong but again you gotta say scope on that one hmm these weapons can feel underwhelming 
because of like your lack of talents for them. They're in the middle road. Now we did make a really cool USC 45 build and it was just basically this gun too, right? They're very similar. USC 45 is faster, but um, that came out to be really fun. Actually, I, I don't think I've created a build video for that, but I've been meaning to. Yeah, I know waxy. I know like, dude, like the only time I basically go to New York is when I'm um, creating a new character and it took me forever to create my fourth character because I dreaded the idea. <laughs> and it's not because your character starts out weak. That's not it. It's just like, oh, I hate New York. Like, it's just like the enemies that you face are just like, oh, I hate playing the Rikers. They suck. They're they don't bring anything cool to the table. They're just tanky. That's it. They're just tanky, you know, and that's. We're already playing the enemies that are really tanky and so you you make it like a bullet sponge enemy more bullet spongy right you make it you know uh, we feel like we're shooting marshmallows and your marshmallows just get bigger <laughs> when you're in new york you know what i mean so it's just like so it's, it goes the opposite direction like you know they look cool though i mean the 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 um the cleaners look cool for example not a fan of fighting the rikers or the cleaners though like i think a stranded tanker and like oh all the the, the little fire drones or whatever and so some of those things like some of the things that you'd be like well that's part of the challenge it's yeah but there's challenging and then there's annoying and the black tusk are like that too like their their drone thing is like i i get it that it's a challenge but it's like you can make challenging, annoying, and unfun, right? You know, and it's just like you get, and so that's why I think like the devs could get a little bit more creative with us and giving us a drone operator that has unlimited drones, like unlimited drones, really. Yeah, I actually do like that 5% accuracy mod there, Blue Rose. I do that a lot, actually. On the uh, White Death. This is actually my White Death setup right here. These two. And then I put reload speed. Obviously, that's an MMR, but... Uh, anybody into putting that 20% stability muzzle on there, that silencer? Like where I have this one right now, a lot of people... People have been saying that's a popular way to roll. I like the idea of it. 20% stability. I like to run it on your FAMAS, for instance. I mean, wham, you know what I mean? I mean, it's hitting pretty good, right? We saw 1.2s in there. I mean, it's it's clean. It's a clean guy. I, I just want them to, like... I think it'd be cool if they buried up the NPCs on both sides. Like, I'll t I'm okay with fighting Rikers over here, too. I mean, even if I don't like them, as long as the balance is, like, kind of mixed up, you know what I mean? Like, it's mixed up more. So I would like, like, more Black Tusk, more every, every, everybody else over there in New York, too. I'd probably find myself there more. And then I always feel like some of those missions tend to be glitchy. Like, the Stranded Tanker tends to be, you know... Yeah, I don't know. I I'm trying to think about this build right here, and I'm like, eh, I don't know if I got anything for this right now. That would just stand out to be unique and cool. It's just like, oh, you know, I can create an all-power one, but it would just look with the available pieces that we have. You know, I can give it armor and kill, but, you know, I don't know. It's, 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 it's not that I don't have any ideas. It's mostly about, like, I've done these middle rifles before, like the USC-45, and I like this rifle. I do. I love this rifle. I think it's great. Uh, I think it really shines with steady hands too, because it's like steady hands is like brace without having to stay in cover. It's two x brace, right? Steady hands is amazing. I love steady hands on these, because you can you can climb steady hands really fast. Climb steady hands really fast. Yeah, the tankers, the annoying people about the tankers is they also have the shield guys, uh, the, the, the fire people, right? Yeah, 
They got those guys with the hatchets and the shields. <laughs> oh man, they're, they're nasty. Those are actually not very fun to fight at all, huh? It's hard to get by their shields. You gotta shoot them in the toes. So, sick of saying Tuck's a new skill build. Well, I've had one that I've been wanting to create. Let me see if I have the pieces to do it. I want to do one of these max uh, skill dam uh, crit damage skill builds that I think that nobody has done before. And it's because it's a very particular formula. And I don't think anybody... I think it would be the highest crit damage skill. Uh, skill build in the game and i literally don't think anybody's done it before i'm not 100 percent sure because i gotta see what uh, what the end value is but i've actually been farming for it forever and that's the reason why i haven't created it yet because i'm not sure i have all the pieces and so we want six skill tiers and so the only way to do it is to run it with the um the chill out mask and I'm not even sure that's the right one, but I have, I have multiple chill out masks. It might be on my other character, but, and so it's gotta be run a particular way. So it can't be done with the memento because again, you're going for max crit. So there's a, there's a reason why you're not going to memento, but you have to do, it's very specific, specific. Okay. In order to get the max crits on the skill build and is that you gotta have uh, Cheska and Garupo in one of these three slots and you want it on your backpack and chest so that way you can improvise everything else out and then go max crit damage max crit damage max crit damage skill tier max crit damage skill tier it's basically the formula and everything right uh similar to the striker build and um except now you're playing off of crits instead of the amp damage off of uh, a striker and then there's no stacking and it's you know Great. So let me see. Um, I have all the improvised pieces already. I know that. So it's just a matter if they're on this character. So there's one just like that. See that skill tier. And then um, what I'll do is I'll take off the Hasbro, of course. And then let's see if my knees are here. I might be on my other character, but we'll check. So it's similar to all, you know, uh, you've seen people create these improvised, there it is. There's the perfect knees, right? You've seen people make these with their DPS builds, right? Um, not sure if that's a great idea, <laughs> by the way. Not the worst idea in the world, but. Not always the best idea. There are some people like that are really good at this game. This is interesting. Like there are so I, I caught this the other day and it was a guy I'd never seen before, but he was obviously a really good player. He's one of those like I don't talk and I all I I just do this random mission and it's pretty impressive and he doesn't talk and like you know what I mean? And doesn't even show his build. He's just done with the mission and everybody sits there and goes, What build was that? What build was that? One of those guys. Right? And like uh basically like a sp Kind of like a speedrunner that way, you know what I mean? Like, and um, he runs, he was running, he runs, it was really interesting. He even improvises his mask. He runs an improvised mask. And then he ran like all crits this way, which is really controversial. It's really against the grain. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? There are reasons, right? There is logic behind that. Like, why would you do this on a, like pretend it was all red why would you do that instead of fox's prayers right well i mean it's been proven that the fox's prayer that damage to targets out of cover will supersede crit damage an equivalent amount of crit damage at least you know so how much more crit damage are you gaining here well you're gaining a six percent crit chance and so if you were saying well i have to have that crit chance then that's a reason why you wouldn't run overlord you're like if i didn't run these i'd be under crit chance right I'm like okay valid another one is that you could say well damage targets out of cover is only applies to targets out of cover where crit damage a higher crit damage value 
does apply to everybody that I can crit on, <laughs> right? Tanks, dogs, in cover, out of cover. And so some people play into the neutral neutrality of a stat, if I'm saying that right. You know, the neutrality of a stat, and that's their logic behind it. And what's crazy is that he, he slaughtered the mission so bad, how can you effing argue with him? How? How? How can you argue with him? He beats it and like he 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 does all direct. I don't I don't remember what it was, but he he crushed this mission, right? He crushed it like 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 a speedrunner did, and it was like it was Lincoln Memorial. So yeah, it's not the hardest in the world, but that's you know, it's a showcase. You know when there's a, when you're looking at a good player, don't you? You know when you're looking at a good player, and you'd be like, yeah, he fucking crushed that, like, and he was running. It was the weirdest build. I, I I still don't know why, but he was running an improvised mask. This isn't a new player. Okay. This is obviously a guy. He's uploading YouTube videos. So I'm sure he's also watching everybody's YouTube videos. I'm sure it's no secret to him that he's missing the brand set on his mask, improvised mask. Why would he run an improvised mask? But forget about the right answer. Okay. Don't overthink it. The point is, the bill doesn't fucking matter. Foxes, contracts, in the end, it doesn't matter. It's all back to the same point that we've been talking about today. I mean, like Blue Rosebuds, I wish you were here earlier, man. Like we ran, what do you think of this? What do you call this build, Blue Rosebud? This one. You know, a lot of people call it the meta, you know. Give or take the holster, right? I just didn't have my, a FAMAS or anything. Like, I mean, a... Uh, um, uh an ar holster or, or whatever so i just went with this but a lot of people call this a meta you know meta ar build or you know you could swap that with the m1a if you want to it doesn't matter but the setup right foxes whatever right and so but we ran this against that's perfect glass cannon right there that's perfect glass cannon so that's that's the sacrifice chess piece and we cleared the same four control points over and over. So we ran this against the same four control points and we timed it. And then I put on a four piece striker build with the striker chest piece and ran the same four control points and cleared them in the same amount of time, like almost down to the second. It was like 31 minutes and 30 seconds, four control points. And this one went great out of cover, run and gun with perfect glass cannon and heroic, right? And so and so at the end of the point the one of the part of it was evaluating builds and how do you evaluate builds that's part of the discussion what makes a great build and you got to define is the build's purpose that's that's where you start but my point is is like this guy he runs against the grain takes out the contractor's gloves and takes out the uh the fox's prayers and even improvises his mask and one of and what i was looking at what i saw from the surface without knowing his real answer was like he wants consistency out of his build that's why he did that damage to armor is inconsistent right you understand why not every enemy has armor so when you go up against those big chungas in lincoln memorial which was the mission that he was playing th think about that mission how many bosses there you got chungas and like the the first checkpoint sometimes you got chungas in the second checkpoint sometimes and the third checkpoint chungas the grenadier chungas or true sun chungas right and then uh you definitely encounter three bosses all of those people are damaged to health all of them are so how much are your contractors gloves really going to help you in lincoln memorial that damage to armor a little bit they're a little bit but if you want to flatten things out so that your build is more applicable to every enemy you approach, then crits are going to be better, right? It's probably the best stat, right? It's the best stat. Better than damage to target side of cover, better than damage to armor, better than damage to health, better than headshot damage, because tanks don't have headshot damage, uh, dogs don't have headshot damage, and then the chungas are wearing helmets which makes it hard to one shot them. But um, unless you're hitting those guys 100% of the head, but either way, right? So I think that crit damage applies everywhere. It applies to the head, applies to the body, applies to tech, applies to armored agents, applies, applies to uh, health uh, enemy NPCs, right? All of those. So, so, and then when he's this guy, who's obviously speed running this Lincoln Memorial thing, and he did it in some 
amazing time it was great it was impressive I don't, probably not a world record but it was like seven eight nine minutes whatever it was five minutes i don't remember but he, he, like the contractor's gloves if he's doing the mission in like seven minutes we'll just call it seven minutes if you put on the contractor's gloves would it cut his time down would it have increased his survivability the answer is no <laughs> the answer is no and if it did it'd be like such by such a small amount you couldn't even attribute it to the gloves you could say well maybe it was the gloves or maybe he just cleared the control point faster i mean the checkpoint faster maybe it was the gloves or maybe he just landed what two more headshots than he normally does maybe it was the gloves or maybe you know what i mean maybe his accuracy was a little better this time so yeah it wouldn't be enough there would be a margin of error there'd be too much of a, a margin the, the, the statistical relevance wouldn't be there you'd have to have a big gap a big one right yeah i like i like the i like damage armor in pvp too like i like because everybody goes in there with like max armor nowadays so it's like yeah well like i think the biggest <laughs> The biggest play is damage to armor in there, you know? Or break that shield. EMP them, that kind of stuff. But like, yeah, so I mean, so it's, it's a really interesting way to play, but he's basically revealed uh, something that he's thought about too. He's basically saying it doesn't, the build doesn't matter. The build doesn't matter. And that's what I'm saying, that he knows that the build doesn't matter. It matters like, Unless you got it like a very particular play, like now a coordinated team of four who are speed running disagreeing arena, their build matters because they got plays and their plays might include dropping seekers so that their guy can overcharge them. But and they're trying to and they're literally, literally trying to shave 0 0.01 seconds off of their time because they're actually trying to go for a world record. And that is the difference that they need to do to get there or they're trying to beat a personal best and so there's a there's a point to those those very specific builds outside of those that's the one circumstance i could think of where builds matter because i even would challenge these speedrunners to be like scrap your builds go with your favorite striker build your favorite negotiators build your favorite hunter's fury build your favorite heartbreaker build i guarantee that you four guys are going to complete district union arena in about the same time that you always speed run it in you know what I'm saying? And it might be greater than by uh, 30 seconds or a minute. It might be faster by 30 seconds or a minute, but who cares in the scheme of things, right? A minute longer, who cares, right? When these things take hours, a minute doesn't mean anything unless you're trying to break a world record. And so I feel like that's the only time that it really matters. Your build, the build specifics really mattered is if you got these specific plays because you need to shave a very specific amount of time. Yeah, and Reaper brings up a good point uh, to illustrate the point. He goes, how many times have we all heard in a group complaining that people complaining that they can drop an elite on the, you know, on demand, basically, but a red comes by and it feels like you're throwing snowballs at them, right? And then he sits there and rips off your armor. And that's just interesting. Like, it's also the damage that they're applying to you is basically always the same. <laughs> it doesn't matter if this guy's if the the elite hits harder than the red they both hit so hard that your fucking armor's gone anyways and yeah like the pestilence is also a good example like have you ever noticed like you put on a pestilence and you run some damage to armor with the contractor's gloves and and you can see it like when you got a really strong pestilence build you're like you're, like a chunk is a really good example and you see you just eat through that armor but when it drops to his health bar or the chunk is not a good example because he's got a lot of health so let's just talk about another just a random elite you can see it break his armor but when it gets to his health bar it feels like it takes forever for the plague of the outcast to eat through his health because you have no damage to health on your build right you got damage to armor and red cores right and so usually there are very few of those builds run damage to health but i actually think damage to health is very valuable on a pestilence build usually i just don't have room to run it but that that mask that damage to health mask or three-piece walker i think would help shoot through that that health a little bit Yeah, AR is like to to bring a uh, to not bring an AR to a legendary fight is 
<laughs> Debatable, let's just say that, right? <laughs> like, okay, let me see if I can find this this whole this other holster and then it's gonna come down to this so I, the, the reason why i haven't created this build yet is because i don't i've been waiting to get the right chest piece backpack combo and um it's it's a very specific formula it's all got to be it's got to have crit chance and crit damage because we got to make sure we're hitting that crit damage value so where we are with crit damage right now for example we're at uh crit chance so we need to hit our crit chance minimum which we're at 43 and so if our goal is to make maximum crit damage in theory what we want is to all of these uh attributes to have crit damage on them so you want you want six crit damage mods on your build which means you need every piece to have crit chance which which will we will make sure that happens right and so we need the holster and the chest in the backpack so let's see if i got the uh the chest so it needs one of those needs to be chest gun the other one needs to be grupo and they need to all have skill tiers Except for one. Now, part of me was like, it'd be even more cool if you can um, run gunner with this. So if we can get six skill tiers on the build and then run gunner, that's even cooler. So I I got, uh, yeah, okay. So let's go, actually, let's look here for see what we got first. I think they're all going to be on my other character because most of my skill stuff is on my other character right now. One of them. One of my other characters. So like a Cheska chess piece. Um, there, there's, there's the piece right there. See the Cheska? Boom. Okay, so that should pump us up. There we go. So now we're at 54. So the gloves, if I move the gloves to crit the chance, that'll peak us out at 60. We'll be at exactly 60, right? The gloves, gloves. Oops. Not that. And so I literally don't think anybody has made this combo yet. And the reason why is because it does require a specific piece. You cannot run Cheska or Gru you have to run Cheska and Grupo. And you cannot run either of those pieces on these three slots. It's got to be specifically the chest and the backpack. And then by doing that, you can run uh, the Gila, chill out, and then put double crit damage here. Right? Not the coyote mask. Although you can, I've thought about it. The coyote mask could be, uh, by going to coyote, what do you guys think? So we will, it, it's gonna come down to the, what pieces we have. Let me tell you why. It's because like, I gotta have six skill tiers, right? This build has to have six skill tiers. It doesn't have to, but I want six skill tiers for it to be perfect. And so, um, If I don't have the right backpack, then it, that backpack is going to have a red core. Now, otherwise, what I'll do is what this mask will look like is this, this, this. See that? There. And then I'll move over the right holster. But if I don't have the right backpack, then the backpack's got to the backpack's got to have combined a grupo with combined arms, right? And in a perfect world, that's going to be a grupo with combined arms and a skill tier. So you see how specific this build has to be? <laughs> and I've been craft, I've been trying to craft it. I've been trying to farm it. It's got to have crit chance already on it, crit damage already on it, and combined arms, which is something that I'm sure you guys have already gotten and you probably, probably threw away or, um, what do you call it? Like re-rolled on top of it, you know? But that's the that will complete the build, and um, if I if I can't, then I can't run the coyote. If I if I I don't even know if I have a group of uh, backpack that I can have combined arms on. See, this one's already rerolled. So, anyways, that's the caveat here. So let's go see if we do let's complete this build. So Grumpy, we're pivoting to now a, uh, a maximum crit damage skill build that where the formula is so specific that I don't think it's been created yet. 
I think close to these concepts have been created, but I think one that actually achieves maximum crit damage on a skill build has never been created before because it's so specific. Now, you can make a maximum crit damage and just kind of like not worry about your talents, but the talents matter. We know the talents matter, right? So it's going to contain the capacitor. Capacitor's got to be there. But combine, we want combined arms because if we're going to go maximum crits, we're going to be shooting all the time. So combined arms. But you could go skilled. Skilled will be my next best option. Skilled on the backpack. That's fine. Where your skills get the kill and you get 25%. I think that's skilled, right? Is that skilled or is that tech something? Tech support. Uh, whatever it is. When your skill gets the kill. I get all the names wrong. I don't use it enough. Let's see what we got here, though. Uh, so the talents matter. The talents matter. And then you got to have the backpack and chest have to contain Grupa and Cheska. Grupo and Cheska. But as you can see, I can run like I can run this one, right? If I have a, a, a Grupo chest, but and, and we'll have Bloodsucker. But that's not going to be any good if I don't have armor. It's, you see what I'm saying? So the talents do matter. A stoppable force would work, but it doesn't have crit chance there. And I would want absolutely maximum crit damage on this build. So when I say absolutely maximum, that means every piece has got a crit damage core and a crit damage mod. And we have one Grupo, right, on the build. And then the Coyote Mask uh, might be best in slot for the mask. Um, if not, then it's the chill out. One or the other. Anyway, so let's see if we have an alternate for the chest also. So, uh, oops, was I looking in the wrong? I was. I do that all the time. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I always look in the stash space. Yeah, door kicker's not going to be a good alternative, actually, for the chest. You got, a, you got a few options. So glass cannon, uh, chest, which is my preferred, but also kinetic momentum would work on this nicely. Um, you could even go, well, you can't go spotter because we're not running that right assault rifle. The mods are really valuable on the capacitor, right? So that one, so there's, there's the kinetic momentum version. So I could put a skill tier on that one. So that one counts. So Grupo, nope, that one doesn't work. That one, I'll take it with me, but I don't think I can do anything with that one. So it's going to come down to the backpack slot. That's the one piece I don't think I have, but we can get really close with it. I've been looking for that backpack forever. I'm telling you right now I have. It's just crit chance, crit damage in it. And I, it could be Chesco or Grupo. It, doesn't, it could be either of those. But it's go to already have combined arms on it. That's the catch. Sounds easy, right? You'd be like, well, I probably get the 10 of those a day. Yeah, you probably do. Um, yeah, great traits. I hear about that. I hear you, bro. What's up, J-Ray? Uh, let me go this way first. Yeah, Strikers with the Chameleon is a lot of fun, isn't it? That's a fun build. Strikers, Chameleon. I stopped using the Chameleon mostly because I went through a phase where I felt like I was using it a lot. <laughs> you know? That's the only reason I'm like, you could, I, I kind of maybe kind of feel like I played it out personally, like personally, like played it out. But I need to get back into Chameleons, Chameleon builds. It's that 90% weapon damage, like, it's ridiculous. That alone, it's like, how could you run anything else? 90% weapon damage.
So, see, none of these groupos will work. You see, Bloodsucker, Galvanize, Vigilance. We want that to be balanced out. So, we're running crit, so I don't, I don't want weapon damage. Um, so frustrating. So, we could try crafting the backpack. But the backpack is, you can only, um, I guess, see, can I, is it the groupo that I can craft in the backpack department? Let me see. Oops. So tech support, skill kills increase total skill damage. So yeah, it's tech support, that's the one. So we can run tech support there. But as you can see, I don't have the Grupo option back here. Let's look at the chest and see if I have a Grupo here. Just in case I need alternates. There's plenty of Fenrises, but again. Yeah, that rate of fire. That's why I'm excited about that new gear set. I'm. Hoping I like the feel of it though, you know. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, so this is the one. Okay, yeah. So you can only craft Cheska backpacks. And you see the challenge there? Uh, not group of backpacks. So I can't even craft, craft it and hope I get the right one. You know? So, but if I have a Cheska alternate, then I might be able to. And if I could, I mean, I'm telling you, I would absolutely. Optimize the shit out of it, even if it came to me in the crap. Anyways, I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna go to my other character because we're, we're just missing our uh, holster right now. Eso Abyss, what up, man? All is good. Uh, Dustin, there's a little bit of a, you know, when the se the back half of every season, the game kind of lulls naturally just because a lot of people rely on new content. And then now the season's ended, right? So it's even more of a little bit of a lull in the game. People still playing, but it's kind of hit and miss depending on the community, you know. Some people constantly raid. They never stop. They never stop. That's all they do. But you'll see everything spike back up in about eight days. <laughs> eight whole days. There it is. So uh, one of these. That's the piece. That's the piece we want. So move that over. And then, as you can see, we don't have any other backpack options here. So we'll have everything but a perfect backpack chest. So we'll just get it as close as we can. And back to the... That's annoying, though. Back to the... The grind on that backpack. And so I think, so there's an alternate to this build, right? So we can, we're going to create this, the highest crit damage build, right? And then the alternate would be like, well, you could also run like a Fox's contractor's gloves. But if the intention for this build is to go to legendary, we would be, you know, maybe better off not run doing though, at least the contractor's gloves, because of the, the whole chunga tank warhound situations right and just kind of let again go to that whole level it off uh with just by uh going crits and have it apply to everything kind of concept which is kind of where i'm leaning with this build simple clean setup you don't have to worry about any of that and in the end it's all gonna mean nothing anyways you're gonna get the same number of kills and same clear time and 
all that so there we go so now we got to get that crit chance back actually you know what? i'm not gonna roll that crit chance yet just we just know it's there waiting for us okay so um that puts us at 54 161 so let's start loading up our our, our crits now i'm gonna start with these pieces the ancillary pieces because um we know that they're gonna stay steady so i'll put the start down here we're not gonna change these pieces we know that they're they're gonna stick with the build So that puts us at 197 and we're not done <laughs> right so i got two slots available there one slot available there and one slot available there so um now with this backpack so i got versatile on it so that see the talent doesn't work here right you see what i'm saying so this is a challenge with the build right now so i i mean i i could go uh, versatile would make more sense so i could stick with versatile here um and I don't have a group of alternate. I do have a Cheska alternate though. But so if I ran, I mean, we could try crafting a group of chess, but I need a group of chess that we could, that could take a skill tier. And that if I could do that, then we would be, we we'd be, we'd be in the, in the clear. So if I have a group of chess that can, that's running one of the applicable talents, it's gotta be group of, we already got the Cheska. The Cheska is perfect. But if I have a Grupo version, like that one, no, because it needs to have crit chance. That one, yes, that's the Grupo version. That's what we're looking for. So we got the spotter too, but that doesn't work because we got to run the capacitor. Um, so if, and it's got to take a skill tier because that Cheska backpack was fixed right so that we were just saw cheska alternate where was it this one so that's stuck with the red core you see what i'm saying there so if that's stuck with the red core then this is kinetic momentum which is okay i mean i wish it was glass cannon but i'm cool with kinetic momentum boom that can make that yellow then we down we got our one red core because we're gonna we have one extra skill tier right so So this one needs to be optimized. So keep in mind that chess piece isn't optimized. We're missing 1.8%, but we're close, right? Okay, so here we are maxed out on crits, and then the backpack would need to be um, take off Wicked, and we could put on... I'm going to go ahead and put on... Um, Whatever it's called, not text or combined arms. And that's because if you're gonna run all crits on your build, you need to be shooting all the time. <laughs> right? So and tech support's great too. So tech tech support's awesome, but let's go with this. So let me go, let me see, two down here. Oh, that one. Uh there we go. So where are we at now? 220, right? 220. It's technically 221. Remember, this is not optimized yet, which I will do. And we're not done. You get me? So this is going to be a 220, uh, 246%, something like that, right? Now, the question is, this is the question. If I can get a skill tier on the backpack... Would I prefer to run the coyote's mask over the chill out, right? If I can get a skill tier on the backpack, would I want to run the coyote's mask? Now I'm thinking about legendary. And so if we look, take a look at it, the legendaries are going to be playing basically 15 to 25 almost all the time. <laughs> Every now and again, they come in close, but you're going to be playing in that 15. So if we did that, then we'd get basically, I would claim the 10% critical hit damage buff off of that, right? So let's put that on real quick. So we'd be at 241. You see that? 241. And then 
I could back down my crit chance somewhere, right? I it doesn't I don't I don't get a win. I don't get a win, right? There's no win there. Because I see, I see, I, I, I see, I, I've already thought about this a long time ago, and so it's just been a while since I've thought about it. So here's my logic. It's not a win, because you only have two stats on your build. You only have two stats on your build. It's crit chance and it's crit damage. So the advantage of the mask is that, in my world, isn't the crit hit damage. I'm not going to claim to 0 to 15 as my stat on the build. I'm going to claim to 15 to 25, right? For stat purposes and so as i saying on average we're gonna be playing 15 to 25 and that's i think that's real and so that means i can back off 10 percent crit chance off the build but i don't want to do that because i only have two stats on the build so yeah i could replace a crit chance with headshot damage but i want to replace it with crit damage <laughs> you know what i'm saying i don't want any headshot damage on this build. you see where i'm going with that so it's just like so I'd be better off, and so either way, let's just let's just look at the crit damage stat. So, I have no more crit damage available slots on the build. It is critted damaged out, right? You get me there? Okay. So we're at 241, and we're stuck at 241 crit hit damage. Yes, I can have 10% more headshot damage if I want to, but we will be stuck at 241 crit damage. You hear me there? All right. 241 crit damage with this setup. Okay. Now, if I go back to the the chill out mask and, and load it up with crit damage uh, is that the one we went on our back no we had 243 crit hit damage and the crit chance will be max I just haven't changed it here but we can do that actually we might as well do that so it's the same it's the same, just no variable. And for me, uh, it's easier. It's easier for me to assemble it because I already have that. I can't afford. I can't afford another red cord. Does that make sense? Because the red cord is stuck here on my backpack. But if you find the right place, you can piece. I'm sorry. If you find the right piece on your backpack, you can go to the coyotes. But it's gonna net you the same crit hit damage with the coyotes unless they pull inside and then you got an advantage you'll get a little spike of crit hit damage right but if they go outside of 25 you get no benefit from the coyotes but if you're playing with the team then you're also helping out your team so obviously the coyotes would make a lot of sense because but it comes down in my opinion it's going to come down to the team benefit that's why you'd run the coyotes mask and that's it just a team benefit but in my book it equates to the same crit chance and the same crit hit damage and then if the enemy goes outside of 25 meters which is a lot more than you think it is you lose 10 percent crit hit damage and then so you know you plays the play the averages if you you know and that's why i choose a 15 average but if you're playing with the group yeah might as well buff your team too right so either way this is 245 percent crit hit damage setup and uh i need to optimize that that chest piece and that all the way and that'll max out both of those the traits and i believe this is the maximum am i missing something let me know if i'm missing so we're missing the the holster let's let's get that but i believe this is the maximum crit damage on the skill build that you can have today and so let's go ahead and optimize this out it's gonna be annoying but I hate this process, by the way. They're like, you needed more resources. But like, God damn it. Okay, let me go click that button. <laughs> God. Just give it to me. You know I got the resources. Just be like, would you like to buy them now? <laughs> you know what I mean? Be like, yeah, buy me everything I need right now. And they're making it. They're, they're making that a little bit easier in the future. See, I'm out of electronics. God damn it. See where I say my resources are more valuable than optimizing my gear? I mean, uh, expertise leveling up my gear. Because I use my fucking resources, man. More than anybody, right? I'm just like crafting shit. <laughs> you know.
Yeah, I don't know, Blue Rosebud, but we need to do that. I want to do that test. I want to do that test. You know, like, uh, that's a good question. So what Blue, Blue Rose is bringing up, I, that's sort of what I was alluding to, the same the question about um, the contractors and the foxes, because I have all of those pieces. I have all of those pieces. I we probably even have the holster as a Fenris, too. So, but I think what I would want to do, like, in a build video for this is be like, hey, look, this is the maximum crit damage on a skill build that you can have. And correct me if I'm wrong, the only variable in it would be the weapon. And I don't think there's any weapon that can bring more crit damage to the build than the capacitor, right? Because it's got that big 30% crit damage mod. So I think it really is the biggest, strongest, I mean, the highest level of crit damage because of the capacitor, right? So... Anyways, so I want to present and be like, this is the, the highest crit damage. I, I believe it's important to know. Um, what are we trying to do? We're trying to buy this stuff. I think it's important to know what the maximum crit damage build looks like and what it can do. And if you care, does that make sense? You'd be like, and that's what the point. So I would run the build and be like, this is what it looks. This is how do you assemble it? This is how much damage it puts. These are the pros and the cons, right? And then be like, now here, and then let me test it with the Fenris. Let me test it with the Foxes and the Contractor's Gloves. And is it, are those better alternatives, you know? And, but we might have so much crit damage on the build, like the Foxes might, is it a combination of, you know, that kind of thing, right? So, but you'll start losing slots, right? You'll lose crit chance, you'll lose crit damage, but we know, what am I going for? The holster here. But we know that uh, in many cases, those usually win out, right? When it comes to just damage. But if they take up so many slots, so if you have to put contractors of foxes, I mean here, and then they take up, uh, they remove cr enough crit chance where you have to start d powering down other places, then sometimes it doesn't make sense. And that's because we're running a skill build. So, but we got to check so the turret here turret here and again the purpose of these builds is always to try to bring your weapon damage in line with your skill damage which is a very difficult task all right so um and we're not maxed out yet right we're not maxed out yet so that's 244 and we got to do the chest to max it out so let me get that 2%. But I mean, you could obviously estimate what it is, right? But we're trying to go make it official here. But the other reason why I'm far, I'm still farming for um, that better backpack is because if I can get all six skill tiers here, then I would actually like to run gunner and pull in 10% armor on kill because your skills will also get um, that armor on kill for you. You know what I mean? And so I would love to... That's a way to bring in some survivability. So that's why I'm looking for... I'm still farming for that backpack. And then I would also like glass cannon. I would prefer glass cannon. I know because I think this is going to play out a lot uh, similar to the perfect blend, and I know how that feels with glass cannon. And so... I always go to recal, don't I? Just bad habits. <laughs> yeah, the fire firewall. But it's tough here with that 30% crit damage mod right there, right? But yeah, on another weapon... You might be able to, you know, and you got 10% crit chance here, which is a value of two mods, right? So even though this has got weapon handling down here, the reality is it's got whatever. And then we, you know, what's also blue rosebuds. Think about this already got damage to armor. So the contractor's gloves are probably not going to make a difference. However, the foxes might, right? The foxes might, because we already got damage to armor. We already got health damage. So I think adding those would have probably minimum imp impact, but Fenris maybe and foxes maybe you know so let's go see what it can hit at let's make sure we got assault rifles labeled up here because we were running 
Mr. Crazy build early, earlier. So let's take off pistol and then let's go ahead and put on assault rifles. I think that was assault rifles, wasn't it? Yeah. So this technician and then, oh, sorry, I keep having to, I go too fast. Okay, and then we got skill damage, right? So that's important. All right, and so um, base is at 75. That's typical. That's what you would imagine. And then it's going to, um, and then 46 here. And then you're going to have combined arms buffing it by 25%. And then you're going to have kinetic momentum by buffing it by 15%. And then you're going to have this buffing it by 60%, right? So those are all your buffs. And then everything else is going to be critted. And I got a, uh, the w warning. <laughs> Anything over 100% on a capacitor, it absolutely shreds. So this is going to be a very, very powerful build. The question is, is it more powerful than the perfect blend? And then once you have this set, what I believe uh, is to start like looking at uh then start you start removing some of those crit damages and start replacing it like if i you could now put um like the memento on your backpack and be like yeah i would rather have the memento than whatever crit sh crit i'm uh, removing does that make sense but it starts here this is a would be a very valuable build to know what your damage is at this level on an all crit build and to know whether it's better to go with the foxes, whether to know whether it's go to the finish. So we have to go through that. That's a very long process. And I don't think we're going to fit into the stream, but let's see what we're going to do here. Um, do I need to have my skills procced? I don't think so. Nothing's relying on the skills, right? No in sync. So five, 12. I should have brought over some of those other pieces while I was gone. So some people think that uh, hybrid skills are weaker. And, I, and the problem is, is that they look at it from a single element. They were like, well, you're lacking damage on a hybrid build because something's got to give. I'm like, okay, well, what's giving? Tell me what's giving, right? And they say, well, your skills are weaker because you added all those crits. Ah, so you're not shooting. This is about three deadly weapons, not just two. And the thing about the reality is, is that when you're looking at your ballistic skills, what hits stronger? Your skill, your combined skills, or your weapon or your combined skills and weapon and it's the latter but my point is your assault rifle is always going to hit more than your skills so these skills are hitting at looks at 137 plus 85 or something like that oh but it's gonna be more because i'm not procking it let me get this up let me get this invulnerable okay so your skills combined a full proc right let me get that going so don't look at my weapon damage. We're, don't worry about the weapon damage right now. So everything's going off the charts. So give me a second. Uh, stop going. It's not going to ever go off. Stay down, huh? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. The numbers go off the chart. So let me let the numbers crush. Fall back down. Let me get that started. Okay. So it's like, we're looking for that combined value. 169, goes so fast, huh? 174 and maybe 91. Or 174 and 108, yeah. It's 174 and 108. It's hard to tell. But I'll buy that. You see, I see the numbers tier tottering, see that? So, Two eighty two. So two eighty two. You get it? All right, crushing my skills. Two eighty two is the combined skill power. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Fuck. 
We delete again. 282 is a combined skill power. What hits harder? That does. That hits harder. So your assault rifle is always going to be more powerful than your skills. Is there ever a time where it's not? I mean, you're always running in sync or the capacitor, are you not? So no, the assault rifle is always going to be stronger. So if you, if you, if you focus fire your skills with your assault rifle, that's going to be more powerful than if you just went all yellow. <laughs> your your skills combined will never outpace your assault rifle, so you're not losing any damage. I don't know, tip for tap, but okay. So either way, so five, I, we're basically around like 700 and something. So let's go over here. But the skill, what people, we can't set aside uh, about skills is that they bring so much more value to the table than just damage. They bring aggro, they bring, um, they never have to reload. They, there's all sorts of things like that. They can go out and get an, they can chase down an enemy for you, right? So there's more to skill builds than just the damage number. The skill itself being deployed is adding uh, an additional player to take aggro off of you, not to the skill. So the downside is like with legendary, we're at six skill tiers, but the memento is an awfully attractive beast, right? And let's see what we could do here. Ah, didn't see those coming. I think that's all of the drone ladies. Oh, there's one. One more. You gotta stop shooting at those guys in the back. They suck your ammo, man.
Bunch of snipers. Oh, the snipers, you gotta watch those guys. They got angles on you, you know what I mean? You can't, you don't always see them. Gotta be careful because they can pluck you off. So, this is where the momentum would definitely shine, right? Is like uh, getting some of that, a little bit of armor on kill. You don't need much, just a little bit, you know what I mean? And I was also thinking this is also where that gunner would come in too. So if I can get the right backpack, running gunner would be nice. Not only would it help with the ammo situation, but again, that armor on kill would be pretty nice. Because your skills are killing. And I would also like glass cannon. I would definitely like glass cannon. You know, we talked about that earlier, right? Glass cannon is, is great, especially for legendary. And we ran it on a DPS build and it works great for skill builds too. Really? Guy's barely alive, huh? There it is. I think that's all of them. All right, so I think that's all. I mean, that's all I need to see a quick demonstration. But uh, so from here, I think it comes down to those alternate pieces. Like what is so we, we build this out, right? You get you see what it, it can do and it can do the job. You see what the numbers are and then you start altering it. Be like, OK, great. So we got maximum crit damage here, right? Now, what happens if we replace one of these pieces what happens if we replace this other piece and what happens if we put those two pieces together and or we you know that kind of thing and so that's our next that's our next test right yeah i think i might be a little bit over the crit chance cap too maybe by like 20 percent. i bet you i bet you so what we're talking about is the diminishing returns right crit 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 damage cap. Is that what you mean? That's what I meant. Like, I think that there's a, a point of diminishing returns, right? Uh, on crit. And 246 is about right. It's a right about there, but we'll see. So let's see. Uh, let's pull in. I might not have him on this character. I should have grabbed him earlier, but um, Fox's skill damage. There it is. You see that? See that? But I think what we want is the crit damage version, actually. We don't want skill damage down there. We want a skill tier, yes, but skill damage, no. I think we want this one, right? So we're going to swap out. We're going to lose. You'll see what happens here, though, right? But we're going to lose um, one crit chance tier. And so what ends up happening is you lose more crit damage also because I'm going to now have to rotate in some more crit chance somewhere else. You see that? Because I lost the slot. I lost uh, the rifle damage slot and the damage to targets out of cover slot, right? Which would have otherwise been crits. So you're losing 6% crit chance and 12% crit damage, which translates into a total of 24% crit damage drop or something. I don't know if that's the case, actually. I think it's 6 and 12. So either way... I have to add now a crit chance mod, right? So we're, it's a definitely a trade off. So let's put, boom. Now we're at 58, good. So, so we dropped that, but let's see how much damage we gain and lose. Now I think we were at 512 before. I'll have to double check that value in a second. 
Let's go ahead and put this on elite. So this isn't going to impact the skills, right? Because we still got the skill tier, and that's all that was driving the skills. And the talents, of course. So I'm not worried about checking the talents. All right. So let's see what this comes out at. 521. 512. So 521. I think it's the same, isn't it? 521 on the high, and then it kind of like levels out to 512. See that? So 521. Okay. Then let's put back on the crit damage. Mm -hmm. 521. All right. Let's just remember that. And then put back on these pieces. And it was basically, it was really close to that, but I can't remember. So let's see. 512. So it's lower. 10,000 lower. See that? So this is 512 and 502. So the high is... High on this one is 512. The high with the, the foxes is 521. So not... We're talking about 9,000 per crit, right? In the grand scheme of things, that's nothing. But it's something. <laughs> right so hold on a second i'm not done let's let's try this fenris and see what's more the thing about it is that 9000 is situational where the crit damage is on everything where damage to targets out of cover is 100 percent time that counts on a target that's damage to target that's out of cover so you know what i mean like you go back and forth on that you definitely can uh we're looking for a fenris holster i'm not sure if I have the right I should I mean I should I definitely a walker is kind of the same concept so I could run a walker um let's see if I have the knees there's a fenris too or even a, a glove I don't keep a lot of fenris actually I trash a lot of it let's See, it all changes a little bit with glass cannon, too, because glass cannon would amplify things. And so that would help the amplifier, right? So your chest talent does... might sway your decision a little bit more. Yeah, so I'm not... seeing a Fenris here, which means it might be on my other character. So it's got to be a Fenris that I can change the skill into a skill tier, right? Yeah, you're probably right, Firebird TV. The tech support thing. It's just that sometimes this, I don't know if you, this is the difference about the, it's not so much the up time. It's that uh, with tech support, you are competing with your skills. And so if your gun is more powerful, and it's really difficult to measure this. So, but I mean, I can't imagine measuring it at least, but. If your gun is twice as more powerful than both of your skills combined, if all three of you are firing at the same target, there's a really good chance that your primary weapon is going to win. What do we want to say? The majority of the time? But... And the, the moment that's most critical is every 20 seconds, right? So you need your skills to win on that 20 second you know, interval, but I don't know. I don't know. But sometimes I, I don't like competing with my own skills in a way that weakens me. But if you're suppressed, you know, and you got that that perk, if that perk is kicked in, what am I looking for? Uh, here. Here. Yeah, no. I imagine that too. Like, yeah, it's probably up more just really hard to tell at the end of the day i mean th th it goes back to what we were talking earlier you know what i mean like we could run it with tech support we could run it with combined arms and then at the we'll we're right there's the there's what we're looking for we'll run the mission over and over and then like at the end we're like god damn it it's basically the same <laughs> and it would be it, you, it usually is right sadly or happily depending on how you look at it 
it's not a bad thing. It's really not. It comes down to your preference. Like if you if you feel like you take too much damage, and you rather kind of hide and cover a little bit more. And so like like there are builds that are like that. Like um, I would probably argue it mostly for like I would probably the biggest one of the explosive builds. Uh, actually, let me get my contractors. Actually, I already have my contractors over there because we don't we don't need skill damage, right? We just need uh, these. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Your skill will kill. It's got to get a kill every 20 seconds, right? Yeah. All right, well, I see your point. I just, I guess I, in my head, I have this extreme circumstance where I'm always focused firing my skills on the same target, <laughs> you know? But the truth is we do have two skills and one of them does wander off and start shooting at somebody else and it's eventually going to get a kill and it probably will eventually get another kill every 20 seconds but what i like is the um the the explosive builds where you're, you're not shooting as much i think that comes in real handy like the artillery turret builds because um you only pluck a shot out every now and again maybe to get your talent on your weapon up but for me like those builds are so hard with their targeting system you know that you you focus a lot more on the targeting system and um then you're not shooting and that's i think really handy with for that tech support so we saw uh 512 as with all crits 521 with foxes and so now what we're gonna do is uh so we know foxes is higher right and so now what we're gonna do is put on the fenris Actually, let's put on just the Fenris first and see what it does alone. You see where we're going there? So now we're at 58, 233. So we dropped in crit damage only, but our crit chance is in good shape. And why? Because Fenris is the brand set talent and not the attribute side where the Foxes has its, uh, we lose an attribute slot. So I don't have to change the crit chance, which is why I like this better. Okay, so let's pull this back to here. What's your weapon hit out, buddy? You got to include your weapon because you got three weapons, right? You got your drone, your turret, and then your primary weapon. So you, you got to... You, you're putting out damage in three places. Uh, let's see here. All right. So we're not concerned with the skills right now. We're just the primary, right? So we're looking for better than 512, basically. Maybe even better 521 if we can. 520? It looks like 520 is the same as adding. So again, uh, basically 8,000 increase, right? So 8,000 increase. Okay, so it's the same as adding the foxes. So now let's combine that addition. There, there. Okay. So, and vulnerable elites. Um, let's see here. Should I reset this? Oh, what did we just change? Okay, so both of these now. Oh, yeah, I need to check this. So, 52. So, yeah, I got to increase my crit chance, right? Somewhere. Hey, uh, try switching for out of the Her Harmony to the M1A uh, Classic and put in sync on it. So you, if you like your damage then. Uh, here we go. Let's see. 58. There we go. 58209. Okay, so that, you see how you see what happened? I had to increase my crit chance, right? Because we dropped. Okay, let's, let's see. So we're trying to break 521 when we should. What do you predict? 533? 529. So 529 with Fenris.
and foxes. We're not done. <laughs> there's a lot that goes into these, right? So let me, there's a lot, okay? So the mask, right? So what if Fenris was in the mask? And I don't know if I have that mask, but what if Fenris is in the mask and then this stayed the, the uh, crit version? Would that be more efficient? You see this, so there's that. But before we go there, we need this version, right? This version or none of these versions. We don't have the right one there. It's this version. We got to now test with this, right? So here we go. Now we got to put this on and then run this. And then we got to go put. Now we're probably going to lose even more crit chance, right? So um, we'll have to make another adjustment. So this one might may or may not go. Yeah, yeah, the, the the Harmony, like, I forget what the base weapon of the Harmony is. It's actually got a really nice rate of fire. Do you know, like, when, uh, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Harmony, like, personally, like, that, even in that rifle variant, but back in, uh, several months ago, I did a, um, a Rangers test, you know, best rifles for long range and power, so optimal range of power. And the Harmony's base weapon, whatever that is, actually does really well at distance it was like like i can't remember in my head but i think it was like it was inside top five i think so it was like the m1a m1a cqb and then the the mk17 and and then from there it was like really close they it might have been the harmony's base weapon so which means that it's that's a really good legendary weapon that harmony because those guys play so deep. And so it landed, it, it handles really well, like the way the, the stability is. It's actually a really good weapon. It's a good weapon. But yeah, DPS matters, right? You gotta check the DPS. Cause it, it, like, when you start switching over from assault rifles to rifles, it's more than just high damage value. You gotta look at your actual DPS time to kill and all that other junk. Accuracy. Okay, so, um, I don't remember what we changed. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, so now we're bringing over the contractors. Okay, so now we're bringing over the contractors. Now, this build is starting to look really familiar, is it not? <laughs> okay. All right, let's try. And it's because we're, we're talking about crits here. We're talking about crits here. So, of course, a 549. So, 549. Oh, did we look at our crit chance? Oh, no, we're, we're not there. So, we got to drop our crit damage again, right? So, that's too high put up more crit chance right because we lost the slot so there we go but it should still be uh, a value probably close to the the best 531 so this gives us 2,000 more but it's still higher it's still it's not very it's not much higher but it's still a little bit higher right typical typical and that shouldn't be that much of a surprise though right I think this would be a good exercise for a video right Make it more efficiently done, though. Yeah, Big Jake. Oh, I, I, I'd be jealous if you had that. But I've had so many so closes. I've farmed. I've like been farming for this. So five thirty one. So from there, from here, I think it's just like uh, so. We know this combination is better than just all crits. Okay. So, but what if we put the Fenris up here and it made this improvise? Would we be better off? Or uh, uh, a walker here? Or what about two pieces of walker for more damage to armor? Now, that's a little bit more kind of going down the situational road where we're like, oh, well, that's good for armor targets, but what about the non-armor targets? So, um... And then let me just drop this down real quick. There we go. So that didn't change anything at all, uh, on our thing. So let's just see what happens when we put back on. Take off Fenris. 524. So it is lower. If we add just more crits, so the weapon damage is helping us, right? So it's going to come down to the mask. It's all about the mask. So now 
we we have to we have to figure out that mask right so i guess what i'm saying is like so how do we get basically fenris on the, if we i i bet if we get fenris on the mask and go improvise here it's gonna come out stronger and let's see maybe we can demonstrate that with the walker i do have a walker version it's not a fenris but it's in that general direction i do have a grupo too um Actually, when we get there, I do have Fenris chests. I got do have valuable Fenris chests. Like if we if we end up going down this road, right? Um, and I might even have Fenris backpacks. But Fenris, uh, we can put the group on the mask. You see, it, it was, if we're adding Fenris, see, there's a Fenris. It's got the wrong stats, but that one does too. Uh, there it is. Uh, sort of no yes 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 no no okay uh there so th this is gonna be the same so i'm gonna move things if i have a group of mask which i should uh on this character though funny when you don't have a group of mask in your stash move things around so much there it is boom boom we got it all right it's the same build okay i'm just gonna put fenris up there Grupo or Grupo up there, Fenris down here, all right, and I uh, get rid of this, and let's see if that beats our high number. So Grupo there, Fenris, where did that Fenris go? There, there we go, and so where we are stats wise, we're max. Um, we pull that off. Or 54. Okay, so we need that to be a crit chance. We'll keep that crit chance. It's fine. We'll put crit damage here. More crit damage here. Boom, right? And then I'll add that skill tier. And so we had a way. So the, the Gila guard was giving us extra crit damage, but we was also giving us 5% armor, which we're not using whatsoever. So let's bring that skill tier back. And this is going to be look very familiar. It's going to look very familiar. Right, this build? Because it looks like your, your DPS build, right? <laughs> I mean, very close to one of your favorite DPS builds. And you can run uh, two-piece walker. I mean, that should be part of the test, and I have those pieces. So would we be better off a two-piece walker than a grupo or... Then the Fenris, and again, it's just sort of like, well, maybe, but maybe you're not looking for that to go overboard on the damage to armor because we already have it. So there's arguments to that, even if you could pull a higher value. Okay, um, because not everybody's carrying armor like the Chungus. So we're looking to beat 531, right? And our crits are max, and our crit damage is looking good. 200% crit damage. 549, so it's the highest one so far. Now, none of this is changing 549, 968. That's basically 550. So that uh, that move increases by 20,000 almost. And that's uh, Grupo Mask. Fenris Chess. And then I think my last move would probably be if I had... I don't think I have it, but I would love to get glass cannon on this build. I think that would top it off. And the chest guy's got it. Um, but that looks pretty good, huh? 550. So you look at 550 on 700 RPM. 60% skill damage right there, right? So that's...
and then the memento would change everything right and so we'd have to go out there to figure out the memento and that's kind of a pain it's it's hard to measure with the memento right you got so many variables you go like i got a fresh trophy i got an unfresh trophy my gun's not stacked my da is not stacked you know so bringing a memento changes everything like but um in a good way but it's just hard to measure you can you could definitely not measure it in here unless you you're really fast right you go get your full stacks and you come back real fast but um either way that's the better setup that's the better setup yeah i like the hollow man mask the hollow man mask would make it really helpful with those chungas and whatever but you know it does come down to the question like this this assault rifle's got 10 percent health damage um you know are we are we happy with those numbers i don't know i don't know i mean that's i think in the field we'd have to go in the field for that again um and say like wow i really like how fast it kills those those chungas i really like how fast it kills those dogs and i do have the hollow man of course i have um one's with skill damage on it and one's with crit i don't know if i have crit with um do i have it here i don't think i have it here i have to go to my other character but anyways i'm actually gonna have to end it here because i gotta jump to dinner but i think yeah that was good progress so we'll let's work on this one guys over the next couple of days love your ideas um and then like ha having a rifle on the back one like the harmony like firebird runs is a great idea thanks waxy resolute appreciate that just saw that uh so the harmony like having a rifle assault rifle combo is a great idea right um i don't know what another weapon i would run i wouldn't run two assault rifles and you run out of ammo issues run into ammo issues what's one benefit of this skill that i can i mean of this build that i can tell you that would that uh, many other skill builds don't have is the independence of it right so it's not super dependent on the skills no you want the skills because they take aggro they allow you to shoot better right because of whatever you don't but one of the weaknesses is that well where's your armor on kill where's your armor regen and we love that in, in, in Legendary because it's it's just like, it sucks when you're always having to not shoot because you can't, you don't have any self-sustainability, right? Thanks, Reaper. Appreciate you, man. And so you don't have any, you don't have any uh, self-sustaining regen and you need that. You need that. It allows you to shoot more. And so I get that we, we might be losing crits and whatever, but we're gaining 30% skill efficiency. That's that's great that's gonna make up for the loss of combined arms we're gonna get 30 percent weapon damage skill haste skill we need more skill health because they're they're wailing on your skills but we saw the weaker version of this build so we started the, the version we went out and tested was at 512,000 crit damage this one's at 550 and the skills are gonna be performing the same so all this is is a more effective killer sometimes that's what i want you to think about the circuit that there's situational now we built into this build they got to be out of cover they got to have armor in order to get that 550 max damage so when you're shooting at a red guy in cover he's you're not going to neither of these are going to apply we weaken the build against red people in cover does that make sense and of course you're shooting at red guys in cover <laughs> and you know what i mean and when you're shooting at a purple guy in cover you're not getting the foxes when you sh you know what i mean so you see what i'm saying so like and then there's of course there's times when they're out of cover and you know and you're getting full damage and we have proven time of time that this build is more reliable in that department it evens out but that's one of the things that's one of the things that's would be a good build right like it'd be a good situation like people always wonder and you get that question a lot from newer players it's like like if they're not out of cover what's better here's a good one you get this question and you've probably asked this question what's better on my assault rifle damage to targets out of cover or damage to armor now i've settled in there's no real right answer i think a lot of the community has agreed to damage the targets out of cover and i do because it's the rarest stat in the game right you can only get damage to targets out of cover basically three places one is from an ally right who's given it from firewall 
Oh, Demolitionist. Sorry, is it Demolitionist? Demolitionist. And then another one is from your knee pads, your Fox's Prayers. And the other one is from your weapon attribute. So there's only three places you can get that from. And the build that has the highest amount of damage to targets out of cover is an LMG build because it's got a greater stat that's already built into the core attributes on LMG, and I don't have one here. I'll show you that, I don't think. But, um... Maybe I do, maybe I do, maybe I do, maybe I don't, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't have an LMG. So LMGs give you the most uh, damage targets out of cover. But, um... Yeah, so anyway, so, you know, that that's... So that's why I usually go to damage targets out of cover because it's the hardest stat to get where you can get damage to armor multiple ways, right? Even more ways coming down the pipeline. But you can run uh, the contractor's gloves. You can get it on your weapon. You can run two pieces of walker, right? And uh, shotgun builds are one of the highest. And same with this capacitor. This capacitor delivers the highest amount of damage to armor, you know? So, but it also depends on your build. If you're gonna run bleed, then damage to armor helps to bleed, right? <laughs> so, you know, if you can run those builds. But, it would be, what I guess what I'm saying is like, it would be really interesting to see us run the original build with all crit damage, okay? And then this build with the multipliers and then see how it pans out at the end. Of a, of a 215 enemy confrontation legendary, right? How does it pan out in the end? Did it really make a difference? This and that, you know? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But if you've leveled it all out and you go crit damage, and yeah, your damage is a little bit less, but it's more consistent on everything you're shooting at. It's it's 512 on the tank. It's 512 on the chunga. It's 512 on the guy in cover. It's 512 on the guy out of cover. You know. So where this is like it's gonna you're gonna it's gonna variable up variable there and I, and I bet that it would be higher. This would be higher in the end. But in the end, would I, you would it be like, did it really make a difference? Like did it like, did we shave 20 minutes off of our clear time? Did I get 50 more kills? You know. And we always come in here and we, we look at DPS and damage, but it is so situational, right? I am shooting at the same target that is an elite, <laughs> right? And so, but the reality is, it's like over here is the better thing, you know, because you got these guys, you know, they're different colors and this is what you're really encountering, right? These are your real variables, but we don't do that. We don't test that, right? Because it's annoying. There's too many numbers. There's too much to keep track of, too many variables. And so that's why the only way, the, uh, this is back to the original conversation and, and we'll leave it there, but how do you test the build? How do you test really test its effectiveness? And then at the end, you got to ask the question to yourself, did it really matter? Did it really matter? And if the answer is no, it didn't add to my survivability. It didn't change the scope of the build. Remember, look at the build like a product and it, you know, it's got to have a, what is the product's purpose and is it delivering on this promise? And if it's doing those, then run it however the fuck you want. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, well, you know, that's that's the moral of the story, folks. Catch you later, everybody. See you later. Cedo out.